Today's ESPN Plus game is brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. For the best parts, people, and prices, we're ready in advance. Liberty Mutual, where Big Ten alumni save big on auto and home insurance. The redesigned, rededicated Red Roof Inn in a core hotel. Johnsonville Brats, welcome to heaven on a bun. Welcome to Johnsonville. Guinness Draft Stout, drink responsibly. Brilliant. And by Polaris Ranger, hardest working, smoothest riding utility vehicle you can buy. And we welcome you to Bloomington, Indiana. Memorial Stadium will be sold out this afternoon as the Ohio State Buckeyes pay a visit to the Indiana Hoosiers and take a look at the conference records right there. I'm Wayne Larrabee along with Kelly Stauffer, Quint Kesnick. It has turned out to be a beautiful day for football. And a big crowd, some of which has filled the, uh, the grass areas around the end zones. And how about that? All the way from Columbus to cheer on the Hoosiers. There and should that, be about 15,000 of them out there from what we've heard. Well, 15,000 tickets went to Ohio State for this ball game. But uh, the Hoosiers in the big discussion here, and Terry Hefner has pointed to this game as a measuring stick, not just for his team on the field, but his program. And that is normally Ohio State sells out this arena. He wants Hoosier fans here. He wants red of another color. And that's what he's looking for here today. The crimson and cream of Indiana and the scarlet and gray of Ohio State. Ohio State will kick to Indiana to start the ball game here this afternoon. Great to have you with us. And here's the opening kickoff. Deep into the end zone, Lance Bennett sees it sail through the end zone. And it'll be first and 10 coming up at the 20 yard line for the Indiana Hoosiers. The quarterback for the Hoosiers is number 14, Blake Powers. He is 6'4", 235 from Bradentonburg, Kentucky. And he was 37 of 57 passing, 360 yards, two touchdowns and a pick last week. And those were career high numbers, the 37 of 57 passing for 360 yards. Indiana runs out of the spread offense. But now a conventional look as they come up to the line of scrimmage. Just a single back offense with two tight ends. And here's Chris Taylor tripped up as he tried to escape to the outside and is met by that Ohio State defense. Mike Kudla led the way off the defensive line. And if the uh, linemen hold him up for just a bit, those linebackers will be there in a hurry. The Indiana offense, Taylor Gilmore, is coming out of wide receiver. We talked of Hardy in the open. Thick pen and O'Neal round out the receiving core. Souls, Hines, Mangero, Hatcher, and Fry. The strength of the line is on the left side, Souls and Hines. Second down, gain of two of the previous play. Second and eight for the Indiana offense. Three receivers set, twin receivers to the bottom of your screen. Powers gets it away quickly. Taylor in the flat, stacked up and driven back and out of bounds by the freshman Malcolm Jenkins getting the start for the Buckeyes at cornerback in place of the injured Tyler Everett. Up front, Patterson, Green, Pitcock, and Kudla. Kudla's a playmaker on that defensive line. The linebackers are outstanding. Carpenter, Schlegel, and Hawk, maybe the best core in the country. In the secondary, a bit thin with injury. Ubote and Jenkins on the corner. Sally and Whitner on the inside. Sally, a big hit. Third down for the Hoosiers. Good protection. Taylor not going to be close to the first down. Carpenter escorted him to the chalk mark after just a one-yard gain at its fourth down for Indiana. Not a horrible start for Indiana, Wayne, under these circumstances. What they want to do offensively is really minimize the negative play, eliminate it if possible, and not give Ohio State's offense the short field because that offense obviously is having some issues. Ted Ginn Jr. back deep to receive this punt from Tyson Beatty. Beatty gets off kind of a line drive kick. It bounds away from Ginn, and the Hoosiers have it covered. And down it at the 43-yard line in Ohio State territory. The quarterback for the Buckeyes made his debut, at least in a starting capacity, for Ohio State a year ago in the game against Indiana. Troy Smith is a junior out of Cleveland, Ohio. Leads the team with six rushing TDs, and that might tell you a little something about what he brings to the picture. He's a very good athlete with his feet at the quarterback position. Going to the air, being the quarterback that they are hoping for, 
he's got some growing up to do in that area. First and 10, Ohio State. Good field position to start this drive. That's Handy, the tight end in motion. And here comes Pittman. Getting a block from Mangold off the flank, but good flow by the defense to bring him down short of the first down. Gain of five to the 49-yard line. The Ohio State offense, and we got a penalty marker down. The illegal block appeared to be a clip or blocked below the waist by Ohio State. Pittman, White, Holmes, Ginn, Hamby. Holmes and Ginn, explosive on the perimeter. Okay. Okay. Number 75 on the off. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Repeat first down. Danish, Sims, Mangold, Downing, and Alex Boone. Boone, the freshman, getting the start in place of the injured Kirk Barton at the right tackle spot, and he's going up against Victor Adianju, the best pass rusher for Indiana on their defensive line. So off the clipping penalty. It'll be first and long for Troy Smith and company. Just underway in Bloomington. Smith a little play action in the pocket of Waits. To the outside, Grossfield read it beautifully and knocked it away. Anthony Gonzalez, the intended receiver. Grossfield nearly made a pick on that. The Indiana defense, and let's take a look at the Hoosiers up front. Very good defensive line. Adianju, Richardson, Emerson, and Ishola across the front. The linebackers are small but very active, and the freshman Geno Johnson, a very good athlete, gets a start up front along with the Panazzo and Killian. And then the secondary majors and Porter on the outside. Grossfield emerging at safety, and Will Myers on the inside. Second and long for Ohio State. Clipping penalty backed up the Buckeyes on first down. Now it's second down, and Smith under some pressure immediately. And threw it away out of play. Good pursuit. Richardson from the defensive line. Kyle Killian and Ben Ishola blew up that play. Right now, Indiana's defense is getting after the Ohio State front line, and Indiana's not a pressure team, Wayne. They like to get pressure with their four down linemen defensively, and they're already off to a very good start having Ohio State backed up right here. Third down and 25 for the Buckeyes. Ohio State fourth in the Big Ten and third downs, but I don't think they hit 40-some percent of their third and 25s on a regular basis. Three receivers set for the Buckeyes. Smith running option takes it himself. Adianju arrives on the scene. Buckeyes had a pretty well defense. It looked like they stayed in their lanes defensively, and Smith didn't have a whole lot to work with there. Gain of about six, maybe seven yards, but they needed a lot more than that. It's fourth down. A very safe play early in this game for Ohio State. Offensive coordinator Jim Bowman just getting the ball in Troy Smith's hands. A quick option to the left side. Not a lot of risk in that if your quarterback just has good feet and makes a good decision. A.J. Trapasso in punt formation. It's a low snap from center. Gets a good high kick away. Grossfield, fair catch signal. Mucked it. Up for grabs. And it looks like it's Ohio State football. Buckeyes say they have it. No official word yet. As they unravel the pile. It's Ohio State football inside the 30-yard line of Indiana. Well, Wayne, what an incredible break early in this game. Ohio State hasn't been manufacturing a lot of turnovers. And so to give them this gift early in the game and give an offense, and Grossfield just takes his eye off the ball just a little bit right at the end and hit him a little high on the shoulder pads you can see right there after the fair catch. You know, Kelly, that's only the eighth turnover for Ohio State this season. That's incredible when you consider their defense that absolutely pressures the ball yep. in every way, shape, and form. Well, now the pressure's on Indiana's defense. Ohio State with a first and 10, and they've got it marked at the 28-yard line, Indiana territory. Buckeyes cluster three receivers at the bottom of your screen. Two of them are tight ends. Pittman. Grossfield in from the secondary, the former kicker. Emerging, as I mentioned, at safety makes the stop there. 
That's an amazing thought. A, a free safety that's now a playmaker that used to be a, a kicker, kicker. Yeah, but a very good athlete from the moment he stepped on campus, his teammates understood that he was always more than just a kicker. Yeah, that's Chris Taylor was saying that to us. You know, he said, when I first saw him, I never thought he was just a kicker. I thought he was a football player. And he's emerging as one. Second down, nine yards to go. Smith scanning the secondary. Stepping up, takes it himself. Little cutback move inside of Kyle Killian, and he's down at the 23-yard line. So it is a gain of about four, maybe five yards. And the head coach of the Buckeyes is Jim Tressel in his fifth season. His teams have appeared in four ball games, and they're three and one in those games. And San Antonio Holmes, number four, that was right beside Coach Tressel, is really the playmaker outside. He's going to be matched up on number nine, Tracy Porter for Indiana. That's a matchup that Ohio State has to win consistently today. Big play right here for the Indiana defense. Third down. On the slant, the catch by Holmes, and a touchdown! Three-yard touchdown pass. Wayne, we were just discussing that. It's a quick slant by Holmes on the outside. And Porter on the coverage, just a little bit too soft and didn't take the correct angle. And then it's just a catch, and the speed takes him out the backside. Josh Houston for the point after. So the muffed punt by Troy Grossfield. Certainly hurts Indiana as the Buckeyes cash in on a short touchdown drive. Santonio Holmes caps it. The Ohio State Buckeyes have taken a 7-0 lead in the early going. Three plays, 28 yards following the muffed punt by Troy Grossfield. And the Buckeyes motor for an early score. So it's 7-0 Ohio State. How much wind is that taken out of the Hoosier sails? We'll find out right here. Kick off deep through the end zone. And it'll be first down coming up for Indiana. We go back to the studio and Mike Leeson. And we take it Iowa City, the Hawkeyes and Michigan Wolverines, 20th anniversary when Iowa was number one, Michigan was number two. Hawkeyes score first, looking for their 23rd straight. Generous spot there for the touchdown for Herb Grigsby, but nonetheless, it's 7 0. And Michigan State, guess what? They scored early and they missed a field goal again at 7 0 Spartans over the Cats, Wayne. Now don't worry about that. Seven there's, points ain't going to win that game. There's a whole lot to come in that game. <laughs> and Iowa on that patented late season run or halfway through the season, they're on that run again. First and 10 for Indiana. Good time, and the pass off the mark as he was hit from behind to the sidelines. Quint Kesnick, Quint. Lane, today is a sellout here at Memorial Stadium. 53,000 tickets sold. Keep in mind, though, 15,000 of those have been sold to Ohio State fans. The drive from Columbus is only four hours, and Buckeye Nation is in full force right here. And that annoys Terry Hepner, the head coach at Indiana. He has been pointing to this game since January. He says this is a huge test, not only for our players, but our fans. We cannot let their 15,000 fans control the stadium. Wayne? Thank you, Quint. Second and 10. Taylor gobbled up by Green. Taylor driving forward and pile driving to the 23 yard line or thereabouts. And it'll be third down coming up. A.J. Hawk also in on that tackle for the Ohio State Buckeyes. When you, you saw the dilemma on first down for Indiana. If we throw on first down and we don't complete the pass, we're in second and third and long against a defense that absolutely tees off on you. Bill Lynch was mentioning to us yesterday, the offense coordinator, some of those first down passes are geared just to replace the run. They're the same thing. They just go through the air and try to get it out the perimeter. Powers. Broken up and nearly intercepted. Almost taken away by Ashton Ubote. My goodness. And it's fourth down. So when you ended up in third and seven, and that's definitely a throwing down against a defense that gets after the 
quarterback, 28 sacks on the year, and that ball has to come out quickly. When it comes out quickly, it gives the defensive back like Yabodi right there a great break on the football. Tyson Beatty on a punt formation for the second time today. Ted Ginn Jr. backing up. Here he comes. Out to the Buckeye 40-yard line. So the Buckeyes have started drives on their 42, the Indiana 28, and the Buckeye 41-yard line. When we come back, the walk, a new tradition in Indiana when we come back to Bloomington. Coach Terry Hefner can't like the start of this one so far. Ohio State in three possessions has had the football in good field position and great field position on their scoring drive a moment ago. Third offensive series for the Buckeyes. This one starts at the 40 yard line of Ohio State. Indiana cannot afford to play on a long field against the Buckeyes. Pittman the long setback. Nice hole up the middle. Pittman finds the crease to the 48-yard line on a gain of eight. To the studio, Mike Gleason. Wayne, you and Kelly talking about the uh, potential scoring fest in East Lansing. Well, look at this. They're down at the two, and the Cats coughed up the football. So they failed to score. Missed opportunity. Still 7-0 Michigan State. They'll have a few more. Well, that's <laughs> that's the important thing right there is the missed opportunities. Yeah. There's going to be plenty of scoring. It might come down to who misses the opportunities the most. Second down and short. Second and about two for Ohio State. Pittman again. Grossfield missed the tackle. Porter forces him to the outside, but he's got the first down to the 46-yard line of Indiana. Well, among the many new traditions instituted here at Indiana for the football program by Coach Terry Hefner has been something we call the walk. They arrive at the stadium about 9 in the morning, two hours prior to the game. The coaches and players walk past the fans from Assembly Hall to Memorial Stadium. And it gives the, the football team, number one, an opportunity to bond a little bit with their closest supporters. Most of these people are family members and obviously longtime fans and, and students. So it really has brought the football program closer to its fan base. First and 10 Buckeyes. Oh, great play by Aishola. It was almost, Kelly, like he was a spy on quarterback Troy Smith that time. You know what it was? A quarterback draw by Smith, and they forgot to block number 99, Ishola, that time. Left defensive end just takes a good angle and chases him down from the backside. So it is a gain of barely a yard to the 45-yard line of Indiana. Well, this is early in the game, but I just get the sense this is such an important series right now for this Indiana team. Defensively, they need to hold Ohio State out of the end zone. Holmes at the top of your screen. That's Ginn at the very bottom. Option, Troy Smith. Well defended, penalty marker down. Tackle made by Kyle Killian, the outside linebacker whose dad played at Oklahoma. I think we're going to get a hold or block in the back again. It's a clip. Dan Capron is the Big Ten official. You know, this might have been on number 50, Doug Daddish on the back side of that play. Clipping. Number 50 on the offense. 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. So another big 15-yard penalty against the Ohio State offense. Uh, Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, 14th-ranked Ohio State against the Indiana Hoosiers. Wayne Larrabee, Kelly Stauffer, Quint Kesnick is down to the sidelines. Ohio State in Bloomington, awfully good. It's been a home away from home for them. Yeah, and they only sold 15,000 tickets in their allotment. But walking through the parking lots today, yeah. it seemed like there was a whole lot more than that of those And Buckeye there was some fans. negotiating going on for yeah. tickets, I might add. Well, those Buckeye fans could just get on the horn to the ticket office here. Second down and long. Smith, Pittman right through the breadbasket incomplete. So it becomes third and long for the Buckeyes. And a pretty decent job for Indiana's defense thus far. Ohio State has had some tremendous field position. The plus 28 on the muff, on the muff punt that led to the first touchdown. But they've been on their 40, the 43. If Indiana can get the Ohio State off the field with no points right now, what a tremendous moral victory. Joe 
Halsick on the field. He's the co-defense coordinator. Brian George is up here in the press box. Third down for Ohio State. Smith. Pittman. Grossfield on the stop at the 47-yard line. It is a gain of six, and the Buckeyes are turned back. And that screen was very well set up that time, and Grossfield comes hard out of his free safety position and, more importantly, makes a tremendous tackle because Pittman was fixing to bounce that, bounce that ball out to the left side, and he had a lot of real estate. A.J. Trapasso's second punt of the afternoon. Boy, he could bring rain with that one. Grossfield makes a clean catch this time at the 12-yard line, maybe the 13-yard line of Indiana. Coach Hefner's offense needs to get it in gear from deep in their own territory. They're coming back next. Wayne Larrabee, Kelly Stauffer, Quint Kesnick back in Bloomington. Coach Terry Hefner's resurgent Indiana Hoosiers up against it against Ohio State. And they need to get something going offensively, Kelly, on this drive. Yeah, they're, they're worst starting position right here, but you're exactly right. Indiana's defense is doing a nice job because Ohio State has had some very good field position. First and 10 from the 12. Whistles hold up the play. Penalty markers down. I believe false start coming right, up against. Down. False start. Number 76 on the offense. Still first down. Isaac Souls a couple of times looked like he was moving early uh, in the previous drives, but this time they catch him. Well, that's a symptom of facing a defense that has such an extremely high motor, Wayne. They get after the, they don't just pressure the quarterback in 28 sacks. That's obvious. They pressure the football, period, regardless of who has it. You saw the rock. That's what they tried to defend here at Memorial Stadium. The Hoosiers this year, three for three at home. First down and 15. Yamar Washington. Nicely done, not across the 10 to the 14-yard line. Seven-yard gain to Mike Gleason in the studio. Well, you and Kelly talk about, well, there'll be some more opportunities. Uh, Northwestern didn't waste much time. Brett Bazinet with his 15th career rushing touchdown. And right now up in Spartan country, they're tied at seven. The biggest question, Wayne, might be whether there's enough water on the sidelines to keep those guys hydrated Man, as I'll they run up and down the track. What a fun game that's going to be. Second down. Gain of seven of the previous play. Blake Powers. Jakeen Gilmore made a shoestring grab and drew a crowd. And Gilmore is about two yards short of the first down on a gain of five. The Big Ten standing is, as you see, Ohio State in a cluster with one loss. Indiana a chance to move up if they can get a win here today. And what the issue is at Indiana is let's play 12. That would mean bowl eligibility yep. getting to six wins. Well, they certainly have their work cut out for them, but... They're making some big steps forward, but that conference right there will cannibalize each other before the season is out. <laughs> now there might be a, the uh, technical advisor is reviewing the previous play. Was it a catch by Jakeen Gilmore or not? And uh, they'll take take a look at it. The uh, Big Ten technical advisor today here is Verl Sell. So that's who Dan Capron will be uh, visiting with. There is Dan. Wayne, we talked about before the game that Gilmore is such a great addition to this receiving core. You can see right there, it actually goes through his hands and it appears to set on his right foot. Let's see. It doesn't appear to get to the ground no, right it does. there. That's a great shot right there great by camera our crew. work. I think you're going to find that's a catch. But you talked about Gilmore being the key. We know about James Hardy. You know, the nation, I think, is going to know about James Hardy before it's all said and done with 46 catches. A tremendous player. But Gilmore is more of the polished guy that has been hurt. He came back last week after that injury. And that just appears to me to be a tremendous catch. Focus and concentration yep. on the football. Jakeen Gilmore was coming on last year uh, as a sophomore. 
and is the hamstring injury hurt him this year and, and really uh, retarded his progress a little bit but he's he's healthy now there's the uh, the rundown on instant replay they're only going to be able to review what that you see on TV at home the review is triggered by the Big Ten technical advisor not by the coaching staff and it has to be indisputable video evidence I think that's pretty indisputable yeah I believe you're right and that's the key you just said it indisputable video evidence and it doesn't I believe get much more clear than that right there but tremendous work and I think in the end the objective is to just get it right and this allows allows that play to be called right Gilmore was second on the team in catches a season ago with 23 for 308 yards. Of course, they had Courtney Roby finishing up his career right. here as the all-time leading receiver at Indiana. So he was the secondary receiver, but nonetheless uh, was a guy who was really coming on and made a nice play on what appeared to be a catch uh, just a moment ago. But he's a guy, Kelly, who can give Hardy the balance they need on the other side, a threat on the other side. Uh, that's a that's the perfect point right there, Wayne. Is it? It allows Hardy to draw some isolation in coverage when Gilmore was out and you had Thigpen and Bailey that are pretty decent in their own right. Defenses really didn't respect them as much as they there did Gilmore. There is indisputable video evidence that the pass was incomplete. Wow. Well, Tell you what, that is very surprising right there. Third down and eight at the 15 yard line please reset the clock for 618 and, and again this may not be quite boy he got the hands under it he got, hit the top of the shoe hmm. this is the one that I think shows I mean look at right never the hit perfect the ground. stop right there by the video crew that never hits the ground I do not understand that in the least yep and it doesn't that doesn't look right. You know, Wayne, the difference is you go from third and short to third and seven right now, and they it Ohio changes State everything. just simply turns the dogs loose. So Gilmore appeared to make a good catch, but the evidence, according to the officials here in attendance, showed otherwise. As bad as Indiana needs a play right here, Blake Powers, the quarterback, just needs to understand that sometimes the right throw is to throw the ball away. Do not make a mistake in a backup situation right here early in the game. Right? It is third down and seven. Four wide receivers set, three at the bottom of your screen. And third down just got longer. Isaac Souls appeared. Part of the staff, false start. Number 76, still third down. His second false start on this series. What, what the Buckeyes do defensively is they bring Bobby Carpenter, number 42, down, who puts his hand down as a defensive end, and he's the one playing over Souls right there. And that's exactly why Souls is getting a little answer. They ask a lot of Bobby Carpenter. He plays a lot of different positions in that defense over the course of a game. Third down at about 12. Good protection. Bailey got one foot down in bounds, or did he? Yes, he did. Across the 30, near the 33-yard line, make it the 34, and it's a first down, Indiana. Bailey, who made a spectacular six-yard touchdown return uh, completion a week ago, makes a big play here. Tremendous. I, I would have to think this will be looked at as well. We don't get a look at the end. Here's the end of that play. But you're talking about a big receiver that goes up and makes a big play. And the receiver or the officials did a good job of double teaming that call and getting it right. Hoosiers up to the line of scrimmage quickly and they get the play off before a review. Jamar Washington on the carry, gain of about three yards. Great officiating on that last play. The line judge from in front of the yes. play is looking at the feet. The field judge behind the play is looking at possession. possession. And collectively, they determine you get them both, it's a catch. It was an outstanding uh, example of teamwork by the officials. Yes, you're, you're absolutely so right. Second down now. Second and seven. Comeback route. 
Little bubble screen. Hardy's first catch of the day is just short of the first down. We go to the sidelines of Quinn Kessler. Wayne, I'm joined by Tom Donalo, who's the chairman, president, and CEO of Cooper Tire, who also is an Ohio State alumnus. What makes uh, Big Ten football so special, Tom? Well, Quinn, it's a league of championships and champion teams and champion people. So that's why we want to be associated with it at Cooper, because our dealers and Cooper people are champions. Cooper Tire, the ultimate bowl tour. What is the ultimate bowl tour? It's a it's a contest that the lucky winner will get to go to five bowl games in a week, fly in a private plane, and end up in the Rose Bowl. Wayne, you can take that play, Wayne. Yamar Washington gets the call, and he is short of the first down. It looked like Schlegel got into the scene that time and made the stop. Back to Quinn. Tom, how can fans get involved uh, with the Ultimate Bowl Tour? Well, they can go to a Cooper dealer and sign up. They can go to our website, uh, ultimatebowltour.com, and sign up. And they can sign up uh, a lot of times. And uh, I'd suggest that they do it because it's a very popular contest. Over half a million last year, Wayne. Five bowl games in five days. You're, uh, you travel via private jet, Wayne. <laughs> Sounds good. I'll take it. Wayne travels via private jet. Sometimes. What's the big deal? Yeah. <laughs> There's a big deal. Believe me. <laughs> Especially when you have to pay for that private jet. Here's Beatty. Everybody waved off. And this one tail drags inside the 20-yard line. Tyson Beatty. I got a feeling he used that Hunter Smith technique on that punt. There's the ultimate bowl tour.com if you want to get that uh, little private jet. And uh, pick up Kelly and I, if you will, <laughs> and uh, we'll take that tour with you. UltimateBowlTour.com. Tyson Beatty was explaining to us before the game this technique whereby he drops the nose of the football right on the toe of his foot when he kicks it, when he's looking for that backspin. And you could see it right there. You didn't get the backspin, but you got a good result nevertheless. Ohio State with their worst starting position of the day. From the 17 of the Buckeyes. Pittman. Breaking tackles across the 30 to the 31-yard line on a gain of about 14 yards. To the studio, Mike Gleason. And Wayne, we head down to Athens uh, between the hedges, uh, undefeated uh, Georgia. DJ Shockley continues to get it done. Four of five passing. Brian McClendon scores the touchdown here, and Georgia takes a 7-0 lead. Arkansas, Georgia, and a big one down to the SEC. Meanwhile, right here, Ohio State, 14th ranked team in the country, leading 7 0, first down. Pittman cutting it back. Good quickness as he made his move across the 40 to the 41 yard line on a gain of 11 yards. We take a look at the BCS standings brought to you by Allstate, a proud sponsor of the Bowl Championship Series. Some of those teams are going to obviously disappear. Texas and Texas Tech play today. UCLA and USC will play late in the year. Right. Last week, Georgia the and season. Alabama potentially in the SEC championship game. So a lot of those names right there are going to disappear off of that. There world. are some nervous people, though, that are worried about having too many unbeaten teams at the end of the year. Pittman breaks another tackle. Running hard across the 45 to the 49 yard line on a gain of about eight yards. Back to Mike Leeson. When we head down between the hedges, Athens uh, undefeated Georgia getting it done against Arkansas. DJ Shockley hits four of his first five, so he continues to impress. Brian McClendon with the touchdown. Dogs up seven on Arkansas. There we go. Thank you, Mike. Second down and two coming up for Ohio State. They're starting to get the ground game going a little bit here. Indiana coming in. Ninth in the Big Ten giving up 170 yards rushing per game. Iowa got 160 on them last week on 33 rushing attempts. Option is Smith to keep. First down in Hoosier territory. Inside the 40. That is the X factor that Troy Smith brings to this offense. He's out of bounds at the 34-yard line on a 15-yard ramble. And Troy Smith just going quick to the edge and optioning off the end man on the line of scrimmage or the first guy that appears outside. That time it was number 30, 39, Will Myers, the leading tackler for the Hoosiers. But Troy Smith has some quick feet when you get him out in space. First and 10 Buckeyes at the 34 of Indiana. Schnitger. 
Brought down near the 30 yard line on a gain of four yards. That time it looked like Myers or Pinozo, either one, able to cut his legs out from under him. That time we saw the change up in the running game between what Pittman has a little bit more speed getting to the outside and Snitner that time is more of the battering ram between the tackles. Jim Tressel's offense last in the Big Ten in yardage, 10th in points per game. Leading 7 0, a late going first quarter. Take a look at the yards on the ground. Buckeyes beginning to crank up the ground game. Slant, Holmes breaks a tackle. First down inside the 20 to the 19 yard line. Santonio Holmes again comes free on that slant, this time for 11 yards. Earlier today, 23 yards and a touchdown. You see the good. Timely throw by Smith and again Holmes one on one with Tracy Porter number nine and Porter is playing press coverage at the line of scrimmage but what they call a bail technique at the snap he's backpedaling as fast as he can and Holmes just snaps off the route and runs inside and catches it for a nice first down. Double tight ends running formation Ohio State. Smith up and throwing and right through the hands of the intended receiver penalty markers are down. Penalty markers down on that play. Marcel Frost, a big tight end, may have been interfered with. Let's see. Pass interference. Indiana, the preliminary indication. Kyle Killian may be the guilty Pass party. Number five on the defense. That's number five actually coming down, Wayne. First down. You're right. Troy Grossfield right there. Very good coverage, but. Watch the left hand. Actually, the yeah, the left hand is on the back as the right hand is swiping for the football. Time for the Red Roof Inn Red Zone proficiency. Save at Red Roof Inns with Reds hot deals. Ohio State ranks seventh of the Big Ten in Red Zone touchdowns. Troy Smith running the option. Cut off at the pass. Killian got out in front of the play. Richardson was also there, along with Victor Adianju, the big defensive end. Perhaps the most talented of the Hoosier linemen. In Ohio State that time, running the quick option into the boundary. And people might say, well, there isn't much room. Why do you run it into the boundary? But you put your formation to the wide side of the field, and offensively, you outnumber them to the boundary. But that time, if you're running at Adianji right there, it doesn't matter if you outnumber them or not. Eighth play of the drive for the Buckeyes. Second down. Intercepted Tracy Porter. To the 30, to the 40. Porter cutting it back. He's got a chance. Cut from behind and went down inside the 40. Anthony Gonzalez made the tackle. They went to the well one time too many. Again, they ran slant to Santonio Holmes, and Tracy Porter picked it off at the goal line. 64 yard return. Look at how Porter this time is heading inside. You see that difference in the angle, Wayne? Instead of head up and softer, he's heading inside to take away the angle on that slant. That's exactly the way he wasn't playing it on the first two times that Holmes beat him on that exact same play. Third interception of the season for Tracy Porter. None bigger than that. They turn away the Buckeyes. 11 seconds to go in this first quarter. Indiana now with its best field position to start a drive. Blake Powers Big Ben, great move to make the first man miss. He's down to the 30-yard line on a gain of seven, and the first quarter comes to a close. The Buckeyes have the lead, but it is the home-standing Indiana Hoosiers that may have grabbed a little late momentum. Buckeyes have the lead. Hoosiers have an opportunity as we start the second quarter. Let's take a look at our marathon of fast stats. Turnovers. They won a piece. An important thing, Ohio State has already scored on the turnover that they got. Indiana needs to get points right here off the one they just got. It is second down. And about two. Oh, 
great play made in the middle of the defense. Schlegel was almost like he was in the offensive backfield as he knocks down the running back from Indiana. Back to Mike Gleason. Wayne, as you know, the Michigan Wolverines looking for their first two-game winning streak of the season. Chad Henney, straight drop. Jason Avant, touchdown right down the middle. 14 touchdown strikes for Henney. It's tied in Iowa City at seven. Thank you, Mike. It's going to be back and forth. Another great Michigan-Iowa game. And the Hawkeyes with a 22-game home field winning streak on the line. Third down for Indiana. Third and a long four. Powers has time. Trying to go to Bailey. Incomplete pass overthrown. Hoosiers were looking for a flag. They thought that Bailey may have been held on the far side by Sally. Yeah, obviously head coach right there. Hepner thinks he was held as well, and I think they have a very good argument. Sally had hands on him all the way down the field, holding Bailey before he could get to the corner out of that break. And I think Hepner might have just gotten an unsportsmanlike on the sideline. The flag was thrown right in his vicinity. Sideline warning against Indiana. They're first. There's a flag laying down. Yep. I think the officials might have misunderstood that it wasn't a warning. Well, it's going to go as a warning, apparently. Wow. And uh, now you've got decision time here. They don't have a lot of range to their field goal kicking do the Hoosiers so we'll see what they decide when we come back. Coach Terry Hefner very upset that a uh, holding call was not made on the Ohio State defense on the previous play it's fourth down. Joe Kleinsmith the field goal kicker his career long is 34. Indiana is out of that range so they're going for it on fourth down and almost five yards to go. Blake Powers into a crowd and it's knocked away incomplete. I believe Bailey had it for a moment and it knocked away and it is first down Ohio State going the other way. And you called it exactly right. A very heads up play by Powers because remember, it is third down. There's no need to throw this ball, or it's fourth down. No need to throw this ball away. Go ahead and try to make a play. An interception, the tackler would probably end up with better field position anyway. Roughing the passer. Number 57 on the defense. 15 yard penalty, which is half the distance to the goal, and an automatic first down. Mike Kudla. Wow, and that's the other side of it, Wayne. See, those are the, the benefits you get by just keeping the play alive, as Powers does right there. Bailey should actually have this ball. He has it right there, uncontested, and then gets taken out. But a very heads-up play by Powers. Not running out of bounds, not throwing it away. It's fourth down. Try to make a play for your team, and just keeping the play alive. Good things sometimes happen. And then Kudla with apparently, and that happened after the pass was released, with a tremendous mistake there, giving Indiana new life. It's the third major penalty against Ohio State in this first half. And Wayne, it's taking advantage of this new life that is so important right now, getting in the end zone right here. First down of the 15-yard line of the Buckeyes. Penalty markers down. Prior to the snap, Encroachment number one on the offense. That's a five yard penalty and will repeat first down. Lined up offsides. Mike. Brett Bazinet continues to move the chains uh, thanks to his rookie, Tyrell Sutton. One of the more exciting freshman, freshman running backs here for Northwestern, Mike. Doing a great job with the ball in the open field. Nice break to the outside. Sutton eventually scores his 13th rushing touchdown. 14 7 now, Cats, Wayne. Well, that Northwestern. Undaunted on the road. They've won some big road games this year. First down. First and 15. Powers coming back for it. Skelton. And boy, did he draw a crowd. Led by Dante Whitner, along with A.J. Hawk and Brandon Mitchell. Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana is sold out. Better than 52,000 on hand. Wayne Larrabee, Kelly Stauffer, and Quint Kestnick. Great to have you with us. Ohio State's won 12 straight against the Hoosiers. Looking to make it 13. Second down for Indiana. Trailing by seven. 
They face a second down and about 16 yards to go. Powers waiting, gets it away, and it's incomplete. He was in the tackle box, but he was able to get it to the line of scrimmage, or so it appeared, and a receiver in the vicinity. In the first quarter, he joined us late. Ohio State off a muffed punt by Troy Grossfield. Three plays later, Santonio Holmes on a hard slant into the end zone. And then Tracy Porter, tail end of the first half, denied Ohio State on another slant to Santonio Holmes, returned at 64 yards, and set up Indiana on this particular series. Third down, however, for the Hoosiers. Offensively, they've been able to sustain nothing against the Ohio State defense. Powers hit as he throws. Had Bailey open with a pass well off the mark. Kudla again applying extreme pressure to the Indiana signal caller. And it's fourth down for the Hoosiers. And again, they're in that dicey area. Do they try a field goal or not? Well, if they don't try it here, they're never going to try it. But Powers is getting this ball off. Another flag thrown off the play as you get a look at it. Well, there isn't much time for Powers. He's he's holding it about as long as he can. His receivers have to do a much better job of getting good releases off the line of scrimmage and getting quickly into their route and letting things develop far faster than they are right now. Kelly, the uh, false start penalty against Indiana was turned down. And so they are going to bring on the field goal unit. Indiana trying for its first points of the game. Joe Kleinsmith, a true freshman out of Lakewood, Ohio. 39-yard field goal attempt. It would be his career long. It's good. Joe Kleinsmith extends his range to 39 yards and puts the Hoosiers on the board. to take a moment to thank our Big Ten corporate partners. Cooper Tires, proud to be the official tire of the Big Ten Conference. Cooper Tires don't give up a thing and U.S. Bank, where five-star service is guaranteed. Memorial Stadium, Bloomington, Indiana, 14th ranked Ohio State, leading the homestanding Indiana Hoosiers 7-3. to a little over 13 minutes to go in this first half. Along with Kelly Stauffer and Quint Kestick, I'm Wayne Larrabee. Great to have you with us. Kickoff upcoming. Austin Starr, end over end kick. Ted Ginn Jr. from the three. Look out. Look out. Nobody will catch him. Secretariat at the Belmont. Ahead of the field. Touchdown. 97 yards. Penalty marker down. Penalty marker down, so hang on. Against Indiana, and against Ohio State, and Jim Trestle wants a what? Personal foul. Number 16 on the return team, hitting a defenseless player out of the play. That penalty is enforced 15 yards from the spot of the foul. It will be Ohio State's ball, first down. And knock wow. out the return for a touchdown. Trevor Robinson, the man they named on that infraction. That is four major penalties in this first half on Ohio State. Well, you talk about breaks. Again, doing a great job. He's going to bust off to the right. It's athletic ability that really takes him to the open space right there. Recognition to his left, the quickness to get there. But this is absolutely gone to the house. And where 16 comes into play, it's really hard to even see it. It certainly didn't, didn't appear to be Boy, in the neighborhood of the return itself. 
Wow. You know, yeah, that is How huge. Big is that? that is very big. But once again, the Buckeye fans waiting for Ted Ginn to really explode onto the scene, and there you see his ability. He's had 11 kickoff returns already on the year because people have forgotten really how good he is because he hasn't broke one. You may have to take recognition right now. Pittman. Short yardage to the 39 gain of one. And we head back to the studio, Mike Leeson. Back to Kinnick Stadium, Wayne. Iowa looking for their 23rd straight. Tied at 7-7 until Tate finds Herb Grigsby for the second time of the afternoon. Hawkeyes on top of the Maize and Blue now by a touchdown. Troy Grossfield down here at Memorial Stadium. The fine safety man for the Indiana Hoosiers. This would be a, a huge loss if Troy's had some problems today, but he is a, one of the most active defenders on the field for Indiana. Yeah, and you can see right there, they're instantly looking at that right knee, but you're exactly right. Grossfield, the thing that he brings to the table is he's a free safety, but he supports the run so well and is such a sure tackler, and especially against a quarterback like Smith, you need a guy to support the run from the secondary and put people to the ground. Kyle Killian said of his teammate Troy Grossfield, he says, he will knock himself out. Yeah. You want that kind of a guy at safety. And remember the background <laughs> is he came on campus as a kicker. Yeah. I mean that is incredible. So they work over at the knee of Troy Grossfield or at least that's what it appears to us. And uh, we'll head back to the studio while we have an opportunity pick it up again with Mike Leeson. Mike. When you and Kelly talking about missed opportunities, this here will silence a home crowd. Like you call a good safe play here, quarterback draw. Drew Stanton already thrown a pick, but he fumbles the ball. Kevin Mims hits a fumble, or creates a fumble. Demetrius Eaton picks it up and runs the length of the field for a touchdown. Bring out the oxygen. First defensive touchdown for the Cats, 21-7. Mm. Yeah. As we speak, Mims is over there on the oxygen bottle for sure. But. Yeah, I would think so. Grossfield trying to stay in the game and now heading to the sidelines. They pretty much under his own power, well. though. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's good, a good sign. sign. Yeah. So the Hoosiers secondary. We talked about the Buckeyes secondary being a little bit thin this year. The Hoosiers uh, maybe thin back there as well. Well, breaks in this game of football come in strange ways. And remember, again, took that kickoff return to the house. The points, points came off the board because of the penalty. Can Indiana's defense take advantage of that opportunity? Will Lumpkin has come on number four to replace Grossfield in the secondary. Lumpkin is a senior co-captain. Second down and nine and Smith in the pocket. To the end zone. Diving attempt and he cannot hang on. Santonio Holmes with double coverage. Porter and Lumpkin for Indiana. And immediately, whether intentional or not, the Buckeyes went right at Lumpkin, who was in for Grossfield at that free safety position. You see double bracketed inside and out. And what we cannot see is number 11, Anthony Gonzalez, was running right down the middle of the field. We'll see it right here. Look at the middle of the field. It is wide open. That's exactly where the ball should have gone because Lumpkin, the free safety, vacated the deep third. Third down and nine, Ohio State. Smith, sack. Back of the 42, loss of three. Myers coming on the blitz. Aishola on the sack. And Aishola is hobbling a little bit as he comes off. Coming off the edge. Does a very good job of coming around the backside, and it was one of about three different guys. Yep. But Ishola was in on that, and he is hobbling big time as he comes off the sideline. Putting situation coming up for the Buckeyes. Grossfield is their regular punt returner. Got to make a change there. And it's Lance Bennett is back. Meanwhile, this one backs up like a wedge on a wet green. And my goodness, Tiger Woods would appreciate that shot. Down to the seven yard line. Who's your star deep in their own territory when we come back? See that guy right there in the red hair? I'll bet he's an engineering major. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> it looks like the hair that the linebackers 
have for uh, Ohio, State. Ohio State. Maybe not the same color, but the same length. First and ten, Indiana's poorest field position to start a drive. The Hoosiers seven yard line. Seven to three, Ohio State. That's Thick Pen in motion. Powers. Thick Pen. Turn back right at the first down marker. A.J. Hawk was over there. And along with the Ashton Ubody, the cornerback. Thick Pen, excellent speed. Thick Pen has the best speed in the Indiana receiving court. Powers is doing a very good job of throwing to Thigpen on that underneath route. That time, number one, Gilmore cleared the route out, and the ball, more importantly, comes out on time accurately. Thigpen is able to face up and make a nice play on first down. Second and short. <laughs> Taylor, nice cutback. That's a good run against the Ohio State defense. Ohio State comes in. Ranked number one in the Big Ten, second nationally, giving up just 66 yards rushing per game. Gain of about uh, three yards there gets a first down. And an interesting approach by Bill Lynch, the offensive coordinator for Indiana, is what you want to do against the Buckeye defense is run right at them. They are so good at redirecting that misdirection plays really don't work. You have to just try to hit them in the mouth and get what you can get. These are big guys to hit in the mouth, though. First and ten. Going deep. Big Pan was out there. Had a step on the coverage of the freshman Jenkins, Malcolm Jenkins, the true freshman out of Piscataway, New Jersey, playing today because Tyler Everett is down with a jam neck suffered in the Michigan State game a week ago. You can see Thick Pin right there on Jenkins. This is a home run play. This is where Powers is going from the moment he gets the football. You talked about thick pin speed. You can see it right there, a little better throw. Sometimes the right-handed quarterback tends to throw the ball out of bounds going to his right because that's the direction the ball spins, and that was a good example of it right there. Four receivers set on second down. Taylor, not a lot. And again, an example. Obviously, the Buckeye defense crossed up for a moment, but Whitner flows so well to the football along with Green, and they knock him down after a gain of a couple of yards, maybe three. Yeah, that's a great example of a run that's delayed. And when you delay in a running play against this defense, it absolutely has little chance. You can see Whitner was actually on the blitz off the right corner right there from his strong safety position. Little running room unless you go right at this defense immediately. Third and seven. Boy, these guys are good. Bowers had time, had time, and by the time he had to make the throw, by the time Jakeen Gilmore popped open, Powers was getting hammered. And Powers was trying to go to the right guy. Gilmore on the crossing route against what they call 22-man coverage. Two deep safeties and man-to-man -man underneath. And you can see Sewell right there is limping off. Isaac Souls is their Soles. best offensive lineman. Look at Powers looking to his left, and that's exactly where he should go with the football in that coverage. Gilmore coming on the crossing route. You don't have much time for anything else. You know what? I, 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 he was not getting hit on that play as he let that pass go. He just missed his man. Yeah, and, and but that, that internal clock continues to go off because Hepner has been coaching all week. 2.5, the ball has to come out and make a quick decision, but just make a little better throw than he did right there. Kin and Holmes are back to eat. Tyson Beattie in punt formation. Ah. And this one shanks out of bounds in the vicinity of the midfield marker, and Ohio State gets an opportunity at the 50-yard line. Just a 27-yard punt by Tyson Beattie. Be sure to join us next Saturday, noon Eastern, as the Indiana Hoosiers travel to Michigan State to take on the Spartans. Check your local listings for the game in your area. When that last punt of 27 yards is a great example of how every phase of the game is tied together. That time the offense didn't do its job. What you need is a very good effort by your punt team, and Indiana obviously did not get it on that 27-yard effort. Let's see what the Buckeyes can do with it offensively. Again, excellent field position to start a drive. They played on the shorter field today. Troy Smith, lots of time. 
Santonio Holmes wide open. He's got a first down and more to the 30 to the 25. Ridden out of bounds by Pinozo at the 22-yard line of the Indiana Hoosiers. 28 yards downfield. And Holmes has an eternity to cross all the way across the field. Avoid the umpire right there and get out the backside because Troy Smith had all the time and more. And remember, Indiana defensively is not a pressure team. They like to get pressure with their four down linemen. If they don't get it, they believe they can cover with their back seven adequate, adequately. They didn't do it right there on Holmes. First and 10. Here comes Pittman. Works behind the block of Mangold up front along with the Brandon Hanson. Mangold and Downing up front, getting the job done. Today's game is brought to you by the best seats for every event. No tickets required. It only happens in one place, only in Vegas. The interior portion of that Ohio State offensive line. Mangold, whom Jim Trestle believes is the best center he's had at Ohio State. Rob Sims, the left guard, TJ Downing, the right guard. They are outstanding. Second down for the Buckeyes. Gain of six on the previous play. Blitz coming from Myers. They're running with Pittman up the middle. And he's got a first down inside the 10 to the nine-yard line. Porter and Killian on the stop. Very good anticipation of the pressure by Ohio State. Getting a blitz from Indiana on both edges. And so the best way to do it is run right down Main Street with Pittman right there. Just go right at the defense. Right call for the right defense. Exactly. Right? And that's that's really what scouting is all about. Knowing your opponent, you're in the red zone, you're gonna get pressure, you get it from the outside, you run right down the middle. It is first and goal. Football just outside the nine yard line, and we've got an official's uh, break here. As uh, Dan Capron heads uh, to the uh, sidelines. Maybe something they want to take a, a look at. The red hat right there that generally stops play when we go to a commercial is maybe a little unsure about his, his equipment. Well, as they talk it over, Jim Tressel calmly visiting with his quarterback, Troy Smith. Let's go down to Quint Kesnick. Quint? Wayne Antonio Pittman of Ohio State reported to camp this year, plus 15 pounds of muscle. Basically went from 185 to 200. Uh, credited the 6 a.m. lifting sessions. He's really talked about his work ethic. He said last year he was not prepared. He let things happen. This year he's trying to make things happen. This year he's much more aware, focused, and more durable. And I think you're seeing that in the first half today. You know what, Quint, he said that was kind of interesting? He said, you know, I didn't want to feel the way I did after games last year. <laughs> And that's what the running back position is all about is the durability you take a beating especially in the Big Ten. I mean it's probably the most physical conference in major college football and you have to be physical at that running back position. I believe all they did was reset the clock and now we're ready to go Pittman once again and this time a good play made by Pinozo the middle linebacker who was a fullback at this time a year ago. And you'll see him come off the right edge. Actually, right inside the, the left edge, very good run blitz when Indiana right now needs to come up with something to stop this drive. A loss of one back to the 10. A second and goal to go. Pittman 60 yards on 10 carries. Smith in the flat, Stan White Jr. Upended on a nice undercut move by Pedozo, the linebacker. And it'll be third down and goal to go, Buckeyes, just inside the two-yard line of Indiana. Keep an eye on Smith right now. The number 80, Hamby, is the number one receiver. Good job of coming to his secondary receiver, and that's the knock on Troy Smith. It's just kind of one receiver and one. That time, a very good job of coming down to the secondary guy in the flat. Big play right here for both sides. Third down, goal to go. Smith to the end zone. Touchdown! <laughs> Troy Smith ran the option to perfection, called his own number, and takes it in from a yard and a half out. 
And the Buckeyes extend their advantage to 10. And should they successfully complete the point after John Houston, they will have an 11-point advantage. And the kick is good. So the Ohio State Buckeyes go 50 yards off a shank punt in six plays. A very good job on the again the quick option the quarterback simply gets the ball and goes right to the end man on the line of scrimmage and forces a very quick decision and that time the decision was made by Myers very quickly but Smith had the quickness and the power to get it into the end zone a very soft edge created by the youngster number 75 Alex Boone playing that right tackle position Boone getting the start here today for the Buckeyes in place of Kirk Barton, who's been down with a uh, knee injury. Here's the scoring drive. And remember, that's off the 27-yard punt that gave Ohio State some tremendous field position to start that drive. Quickly, back to the studio, Mike. When the Georgia Bulldogs, uh, ranked number four in the BCS, getting some help from the defense and some backups right now. Check out the nice INT by Tim Jennings. Now, D.J. Shockley had left the field limping, so Joe Tereshinsky, the local kid, whose grandpa and his dad both played at Georgia, Tereshinsky at quarterback, finds the freshman, Muhammad Masakoy. He's out at the shy of the goal line, but they took it in for the touchdown. Georgia's up to the touchdown. Thank you, Mike. Ohio State has extended its advantage to 14-3. to The kickoff deep through the end zone, and we have not seen... Lance Bennett, Indiana's fine kick return man, have an opportunity yet. Well, Indiana needs to come up with something offensively right here. Blake Powers and that offensive group need to get something going. Get points on the board. The only time they really sustained anything, and they were actually given very good field position. Great time for it. Go down and get points. Go into halftime with some momentum and a good taste in your mouth. Well, they've been able to do precious little against this Ohio State defense. <laughs> Trying to escape to the outside and not a whole lot there for Yamara Washington. Over to make the tackle, big Marcus Green. <laughs> And that what is what makes running on this Ohio State team so difficult. They're tough at the point of attack, and then when you try to slide outside, they are so good at the linebacker position, regardless of who you're talking about, to just continue to slide until they find the football. Second down at eight. Washington, the lone setback. Schlegel on a blitz. They picked it up pretty well. Pass nearly picked away. And Jennifer Thigpen, you body read it beautifully, knocked it away near the 29-yard line. Memorial Stadium in Bloomington, Indiana, filled with red, two different colors of red, scarlet and gray, crimson and green. Wayne Larrabee, Kelly Stauffer, Quint Kastik, great to have you with us on a beautiful afternoon for college football. Ohio State has been very successful in these environs. They call Memorial Stadium in Bloomington a home away from home. Indiana's longest drive in terms of number of plays, six plays here this afternoon. Third down here. Blake Powers has Gilmore, and it's through his hands incomplete. Penalty markers down late. Ubote on the coverage may have gotten a piece of the receiver. Well, Gilmore definitely had Ubote beat, and Ubote reaches in with his right hand, I think, That's right at the first. end. Number 26 on the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. I think this has a tremendous effect on the play. Right there, he, Ubote grabs the left arm of Gilmore and doesn't allow him to get both hands up to catch this football. Two very good looks at it right there. Just a little bit short of being tremendous timing for Ubote right there on that, that coverage. He got a great jump the play before on Thigpen reading the route. That time he got beat over the top. Jakeen Gilmore, we mentioned him early today. James Hardy is the standout receiver. First down for the Hoosiers at the 37 in their own territory. 
Powers under pressure, lets it go. Nice catch made on the near side. Gilmore again beat Ubote to the 41-yard line on a gain of about four. We talked of Hardy. He's the guy who came in here second of the nation at receiving yards per game, but today has been quiet. Meanwhile, Gilmore has emerged on the other side. And it's because of Hardy that Gilmore has been allowed to emerge. A very good compliment on the other side of the ball, but number 82 right there, Hardy, is going to have to factor into this game for the Hoosiers if they have a chance. Second down, Hoosiers. Powers just got it away. He was being pressured as uh, coming up the middle on that play, looping inside from his defensive end spot, Mike Kudla. Back to Quint on the sidelines. Wayne, it was interesting to talk to James Hardy this week. After the Iowa game last week, he told us that he watches tapes of the games himself. He goes back to his house and watches the tape two or three times on his own till the wee hours of Saturday morning. Uh, the Iowa game, he said he noticed that he didn't run a couple routes as hard as he should have. He missed a couple blocks. He said he needed to make more plays. And keep in mind, he had over 200 yards of receiving. Wayne? <laughs> He is a student of the game, the young man. That's why he's improved so quickly. Powers rolling to the sideline, and he just threw that one away. Threw it toward Hardy, the uh, basketball player, on the far side. And Ubote had the coverage, but I think uh, Blake was just trying to get rid of that one without a negative play. He had nothing going. He was, Powers was certainly being very cautious on that throw, but at 6 7. You know, you can throw a ball up where you can't to a different receiver and have it be fairly safe. And if Hardy can go up and make a play at 6-7, so be it. But if not, it goes harmlessly out of bounds. Tyson Beatty's last punt travel just 27 yards. Twin safeties back deep for Ohio State. Both are dangerous. Good leverage into this kick. Ted Ginn Jr. from the 11. Out across the 25, brought down short of the 30-yard line. It'll be first down for Ohio State from there. 48-yard punt, 18-yard return, and we head back to the studio in Mike Leeson. And we head back to Athens, Georgia. Darren McFadden of Arkansas, just a rookie, back-to-back 100-yard -back games, trying again. Finds a lane, and he is off to the races. Takes it to the house. Hogs on the board. It's 14-7, Georgia, Wayne. Thank you very much, Mike. Ohio State back on the field offensively. First down, 29-yard line, Buckeye territory. Schnitger ran into a wall. Kyle Killian got into the hole and cut him off there. And he had a lot of help from his friends. Remember, Wayne, that Indiana's defense has been on the field a ton today in difficult situations and for the most part has performed very well. The effect that that has, though, we'll see in the second half if this Ohio State Buckeye offense can wear down this defense and start to make plays in the second half. Second down at about eight. Smith. Got a man wide open. Hamby down the sidelines across the 50. Into Hoosier territory inside the 45 at the 42-yard line. 27-yard gain. Hamby at the right tight end position is going to cross underneath right there. Very good job of clearing the coverage so that Smith could get him as he came out the backside and another split second and Ishola puts him on the ground. Ooh, that's a high tackle attempt too. First down at the 42 yard line. Indiana Territory, Ohio State leading it 14 to three. On a delay, Pittman up the middle. He does run hard. Gain of about six, back to Mike Gleason to the studio. Wayne down in Cincinnati. The Bearcats are actually undefeated at home, 3-0. Louisville still looking for their first Big East victory. Brian Brom with two touchdown passes, both to Harry Douglas. That's 14 scoring strikes. Twice they've gone for two, twice they failed. It's 18-7 Louisville. Yeah, Louisville, as Mike mentioned, looking for their first Conference USA uh, win of the season. A lot of people thought they might dominate that conference. Second down. Pittman to 66 yards. Louisville Big East, I should say. Smith down the middle, diving grab made. First down and goal to go. Ted Ginn Jr. on a sensational catch. 
He beat Leslie Myers. And that is the same play action pass that Ohio State hit a couple times for big plays last week. Very good coverage by Myers right there, but a very good throw and catch. Play action pass where My or Smith actually kind of steps into the line of scrimmage, backs up, and just makes a tremendous throw. 27 yard pass play brings the Buckeyes to the doorstep. Pittman. And this time he's turned away, wanted to go right and turned back the other way by Charlie Emerson, the fine nose guard of the Indiana Hoosiers. Wayne, something to keep in mind is remember number four, Will Lumpkin is playing that free safety position in place of Troy Grossfield. He went down what appeared to be a tweaked right knee and Ohio State has actually gone after that position a couple of times already since that injury. Buckeyes with four wide receivers make it five. Naked shotgun for Troy Smith. They spread the field. Smith under pressure throws it away out of play. And a penalty marker down. Intentional grounding. Yeah, I think this is a good call. Remember, if he's outside the tackle spot, he can throw the ball away, but he has to throw it past the line of scrimmage. And Ohio State conversely is arguing that there was a receiver in the vicinity, so it didn't make any difference. Yeah, the ball definitely didn't pass line of scrimmage, Wayne. Yep. There's no flag on the play. Ben Ishola with the pressure. Ben Ishola does a good job of just a spin move down at the bottom coming up inside. You have to make the play right there while you have a chance. And I don't know about that. That ball was in the vicinity of Ginn, and really that's all that it takes. Yep. But Smith had no intention of trying to get that ball to number seven out on the sideline. It is third down and goal to go, just inside the 10. Again, they spread the field. This time with three wide receivers. They're running with Pittman up the middle. Down near the five yard line. Indiana able to recover. Kyle Clint Killian along with Aaron Mitchell team up on the stop. But Killian, the principal defender, and now it's fourth down and goal to go. The football to the five yard line, and the field goal unit is on. Joe Palsik, co defensive coordinator, his defense able to hold after the big pass play to Ted Ginn. Josh Houston, punt for Minda uh, for the field goal try of 23 yards. And he has it through the uprights. And with just a little under three minutes to go before halftime, Ohio State owns its biggest lead of the day. 14 points, 17 to three. Let's head back to the studio. Mike Gleason, what's coming up at halftime? Well, Wayne, coming up at the half, the battle of the QBs and each slanting, producing some unexpected defensive mileage from Northwestern. Iowa shoots for 23 straight at Kinnick as they take on Michigan. And the SEC, number four, Georgia, playing between the hedges. Mark Rick, hoping their minds aren't on the world's largest cocktail party next week. <laughs> we, we were anticipating that ourselves. <laughs> There's been no sign of it thus far. There are no cocktails for this group. We're a Spartan group. Speaking of which, we'll be there next week in Spartan country. Indiana trying to hang in with 14th ranked Ohio State. And so far, the Buckeyes have controlled things for the most part. Well, Indiana has done a decent job of hanging in all year. They hung in last week against Iowa. They have to get past the hanging in part yeah. and get to the part where they make plays, get points on the board to win football games. And they have not been able to move the football at all against this Ohio State defense for the most part. High kickoff deep into the end zone. Lance Bennett told to stay there by Jakeen Gilmore. I think Lance wanted to, to give that a run. Well, we talked about the talented duo on the outside for Ohio State. Antonio Holmes, number four. Ted Ginn, number seven. And Holmes is a more polished receiver. You can see right here, the slant has been the route that he has liked all afternoon. And Smith has found him a couple of different times. Good job of runs after the catch. But definitely the most polished receiver on this football team who has the physical ability. And then Ginn brings the home run hit ability. 
he needs to continue to progress as the total package and run better routes and more consistent routes. And you talk about a great pair of guys to throw the football to. Blake Powers on the rollout. Upended on the play is O'Neal, the tight end. But a good gain out across the 25 to the 28 yard line. Second and two coming up. Well, Wayne, the Hoosiers right now desperately need to get something going. Even if they don't get points, show signs that you've made some adjustments against this defense and you think you can do some things in the second half. They spread the field here. Time becoming a factor. Indiana has two timeouts remaining. Powell, Powers missed Bailey, and he was wide open. Powers has missed some throws downfield. We'll get down to, speaking of down to the field, down to Quint on the sidelines. Quint? Wayne, for Ohio State, the need for speed means they've hired Butch Reynolds as their uh, strength and conditioning assistant uh, in charge of sp uh, speed training and nutrition. Three-time Olympian, uh, world record holder in the 400 meters. This guy's got decades of experience. Uh, but track speed and football speed differ, and his focus has been to give these Ohio State players a burst of speed in 10 and 20 yard sprints, uh, improve their technique, their concentration, and their form. Yeah, Wayne? 10 and 20 yards, that's what it's really all about in this game. Boy, Ohio State, you try to go wide on this defense, you're asking for trouble, and the Buckeyes all over it. Schlegel, the middle linebacker, read that toss to Taylor, and it becomes now a fourth down for Indiana. Well, right now that we talked about Butch Reynolds and the speed that he brings to this Ohio State team, you see the difference right now between one program and the other. Ohio State has speed right now on the field on both sides of the ball that the Hoosiers simply do not possess. That is exactly where Hepner needs to take this program. He needs that injection of speed. And that comes from athletic ability. And as Quint mentioned a moment ago, it does come in some cases from coaching. And uh, you've got a guy in your program like Butch Reynolds, oh, yeah. uh, he knows speed. And uh, you know, you, you, most of that is God given Kelly, but there is technique you can use to to uh, run a little bit faster than maybe you normally would. Yeah, and the point that Quint made is an excellent point in this, that there's a difference between speed on the track and speed once you step on the football field. But Butch Reynolds is doing a good job of having these guys incorporate true speed and how it translates on the field in Ohio State is different today than this Hoosier team, and you can see that's a big difference. No, you know, it, it's interesting that, uh, that that's what struck me with the quote from Butch Reynolds about how this isn't track speed. This is a different kind of speed we're teaching now on the football field. Fourth down, third three and out for Indiana this afternoon. Tyson Beatty gets off a good punt here. It hits. I think the Ohio State people lost it in the sun. Holmes and Ginn. <laughs> And uh, the Hoosiers able to down it up near the 38 yard line of Ohio State. And there's a look at it. We were, they forecasted uh, cloudy skies here today, but we've had more sun than clouds. It's been a beautiful day for football. And kind of some, the sun peeking through some high clouds. And when the punt returners have to look up into that, sometimes you do lose the football. Exactly that. Ohio State, two timeouts left, a minute 48. There's plenty of time to get something done before the half is out. That's Ted Ginn in motion. Make it shotgun for Smith. He's going to Ginn. Got a block off the flank from Gonzalez. Ted Ginn motoring the sidelines into Hoosier territory to the 38-yard line of Indiana. And speaking of Teddy Ginn and company, this week's passing combinations brought to you by Cargo. We collaborate, create, and succeed with our customers. All of that last week against oh, uh, Michigan State for the Ohio State Buckeyes. And you can see the three big plays right there. And big plays haven't been coming to the Buckeye offense. And if you're not consistent to pick up the short yardage, you have to have the big plays. And they got it in bunches a week ago. 25 yards on the previous play. Smith in scoring range over the middle. Threaded the needle between defenders and a lunging grab made by Anthony Gonzalez near the 31 yard line. It's a gain of about seven yards. Buckeyes go without a huddle. Inside a minute 30 to go this first half. You wouldn't really anticipate using any timeouts until under one minute right here. 
Wells. Maurice Wells on his first carry of the day. Plow straight ahead for the first down to the 26-yard line of Indiana. Great job right here by Troy Smith in managing this this hurry up situation. You don't use your timeouts as a rule of thumb until under one minute. And obviously also in college football, the clock stops at the first down. Troy Smith signaling the play to his perimeter people. He has a three wide receiver set. Plenty of time. Dropped incomplete. Coming back to the uh, big tight end, Marcel Frost, the sophomore out of South Euclid, Ohio, who goes 6'5 and 255. Watching him down on the field this morning, I was amazed at how fast that big man is. Yeah, I, we talked about that on the field is if you haven't been down on the field in a while, you forget how big and strong and fast these players these kids are. are. It's it, it amazing. It's really incredible. So it becomes a second down and 10 for Ohio State now. The incompletion stops the clock. 51 seconds left to go in this first half. Hoosiers were showing blitz, and I think somebody flinched on that big offensive line. Right of the snap. False start. Number 80 on the offense. Still second out. Ryan Hamby, the tight end. Coming up at halftime with Mike Leeson, John Cooper, ESPN Plus, College Game Day Studio, quarterback battle in East Lansing. We've got Michigan looking for two in a row. Second down. Smith. Incomplete. Santonio San Holmes under the linebacker coverage of John Pinozo near the 19 yard line of Indiana. Indiana doing a very nice job of mixing up the looks right now that Smith is getting in the plus territory. They played soft coverage on first down and on that play where they had a illegal procedure, Ohio State jumped off sides. They, Michigan or Indiana was coming with everybody and playing man in the secondary and that down it was back to the soft coverage again. Third down and long Ohio State third and 15. Schnitker. My goodness, they won't like that call in Columbus. That was not a go for the throat kind of call. Fourth down, Buckeyes. Well, Wayne, you couldn't have really said it any better. I think that's exactly what the Buckeye Nation has a problem with offensively for this team. Is in situations like that, if you don't have a quarterback on the field that you can trust any more than running right into the middle, the mouth of the defense, then put someone else in there and have them make a play. If you don't trust the quarterback on third and 15 in this kind of field position with that kind of a score, then you don't have a quarterback. Yeah, Houston's a kicker that you know that you have a field goal attempt that is a given. You tell your quarterback, we're going to attempt a field goal. If nothing else, do not make a mistake, and then you expect him to go out and do what he's told. Timeout taken by Ohio State now. One timeout left for the Buckeyes. And here is an advanced look at the upcoming schedules for Indiana and Ohio State brought to you by Advance Auto Parts. And again, Ohio State is Minnesota uh, on the road and then Illinois Northwestern to the horseshoe later in November. Indiana on the road at Michigan State next week and they're going to have to move the football a lot better than they did here today to hang in with the Spartans. Minnesota and Michigan rounding it out for Indiana before they play Purdue on the uh, final weekend of the regular season. Well, it will be an interesting battle to see Northwestern's offense against this Ohio State defense. Northwestern, I think, their scheme is good because they spread people out and throw the football, but whether they're going to have time to throw the football will be an interesting thing to say. Northwestern up 21-7 at Michigan State. Details coming up at halftime for Mike Gleason. 49-yard field goal attempt by Houston. Here's the kick to the uprights, and it is no good. He pulled it to the left. Time winds down in this first half. Jim Tressel and company have the lead. But it is 17 to 3 over Indiana at halftime in Bloomington. We send it back to the ESPN Plus College Game Day Studio. 
Off to Kinnick Stadium where the Hawkeyes greeted the maize and blue of Michigan. Scrimmage is today's code word. Log on to 100yardblitz.com for your chance to win. 17 to 3, Ohio State at halftime as we get set to start the third quarter. Wayne Larravee along with Kelly Stoffer and uh, the receivers in this ball game. We talked about it at the outset, Kelly. We have some of the best in the conference here. Uh, how have they done so far? Pretty well at Ohio State. I mean, the Santonio Holmes right there on the slant has been his play of the day. Smith doing a good job of getting the ball out on time, and Holmes obviously can can do something with it after the catch, and that really is the difference in this game. Holmes has been more of the the underneath guy, and then Ginn is the guy that Smith has found down the field a few different times. The big plays Ohio State has gotten, and Indiana simply has not. Ohio State will accept the opening kickoff of the second half. You get a look at what the uh, big shots have done on the perimeter here today. A short kick juggled and dropped by DeAndrea. It's up for grabs, and it's going to be Indiana ball at the 24-yard line. DeAndrea, a linebacker, got to it first. And the officials confer right now. I thought I heard a whistle out there early on. Well, the whistle could be the issue because there was a fair catch by DeAndre, but it was a muck fair catch that should be a fumble, but the whistle nullifies everything. Yeah, you can hear it right there faintly. The whistle killing the ball. Oh, wow. That is huge. I mean, that's just so big. What a break for the Buckeyes, number one. But it is an inadvertent. I don't know if they called it on, on, in the Big Ten an inadvertent whistle, but that's essentially what it was. Yeah. But once that whistle sounds, Kelly, uh, all bets are off. Yeah, exactly. And so if there's a muff, if there's a fun, whatever, it's it's over. It. it and it was inadvertent because it was early. Mm -hmm. You have to make sure the player that is going to field the punt or the kickoff, if he's called a fair catch, has possession of the football. And that time, the official did not give DeAndre a chance to demonstrate that he had control of it, and obviously he did not. Well, the officials are human, too, and sometimes they make an anticipatory call, and in that case, it may prove to be pretty big, at least to the outset of this second Man. half for Coach yeah. Terry Hefner. If you're Indiana and your offense has struggled and gotten next to nothing, and they act like they're going to go back and kick this off. Well, they're going to redo the whole thing. Which I don't understand that part of it whatsoever. But I guess to determine possession, you either give it to where DeAndre figure uh, signal for the fair catch, or you have to go back and do it all over again. You know, I would think with the inadvertent whistle, you would give possession to Ohio State where the ball, you know, right uh, wherever DeAndrea was, 36 yard line or thereabouts, and, and give DeAndrea, possession there. But. Yeah, DeAndrea did the right thing. An up back that's trying to feel the short kickoff. Signal the fair catch because you don't know what to do with it once you get it. He did the right thing, but he didn't feel the football. So DeAndrea bailed out by the call by the officials and uh, Coach Terry Hefner not happy at all. There have been a couple of calls, two, three calls now in this game that have uh, wow gone against him. And he shouldn't be happy about it, but the bottom line is there's nothing that can be done about it. And the reason they're re-kicking it is this is one of those correctable errors in college football. So they will tee it up again. Well, it's interesting that you can correct it by going back and kicking the ball off, but you can't correct it, which what should have happened is Indiana possessing the football. And, of course, the inadvertent whistle means that some guys probably just stopped playing at that point in time when they heard the whistle like they should. Right. So that's why they make it a correctable situation, and that's the case here. Here's the kickoff now, carrying deeper at the goal line. Ted Ginn slips a defender, hemmed in, down he goes. The man who got downfield first, and now some extracurricular pushing and shoving going on. 
But the guy who got downfield first was Chris Phillips, a defensive back. Number 16. So tempers running high here as Teddy Ginn, I think, may have uh, thrown a fist out there, and he heads off. I hope he found his helmet because he didn't come up with it after that play. Yeah. First down, Ohio State, without Ted Ginn. Cutback run, a Pittman, a rope down nicely across the 15 near the 17-yard line. Myers on the stop. The numbers from the first half of play, Kelly, what do they tell you? Well, the rushing yards are a big indication of who was in control in that first half. Ohio State could run it. Indiana couldn't do anything, run it or pass it. The first downs, if you obviously Indiana couldn't convert on anything. And then look at the time of possession. The time of possession, the part of that that I'm interested in is Indiana's defense was out there a ton. Are they worn out for the second half? Second and nine, Pittman again. Just across the 20 yard line. To further amplify what you mentioned a moment ago, a gain of about four yards on that run, Indiana's longest possession in terms of number of plays, seven. Longest possession in terms of yardage, six plays, 31 yards. They did nothing offensively against this Ohio State defense. And when what you have to do if you're struggling offensively and you can't drive the football, you have to come up with big plays. Indiana didn't do that either. Ohio State had all the big plays. Third down for the Buckeyes at their 21-yard line. Smith, lots of time. Santonio Holmes underneath the coverage of Tracy Porter for a first down up across the 35-yard line. We talked about this matchup. Holmes, number four, on number nine right there, Porter. Good job. This is a break on the throw. You could see Holmes looking over his right shoulder. He's watching the quarterback, and he doesn't break off his route until the quarterback releases the football. Then he snaps it off and comes back. Great throw, great catch, perfect timing. 16-yard gain to a first down. Cutting it back. Pittman. Penalty marker down. Pittman down the sidelines. Angled out of bounds by Will Lumpkin inside the 30-yard line of Indiana, but a penalty marker thrown back near the 49-yard line of the Hoosiers. 33-yard run pending the outcome of the flag, and it's going to go against Ohio State. The one aspect of their game today the Buckeyes would like to have back. Number four on the offense. A 10-yard penalty is enforced from the spot of the foul. They have had a problem with penalties here today, including some big ones. Six penalties, 81 yards of the first half. And this becomes a big play, big penalty here because it wipes out a 33-yard run. Seventh penalty against Jim Trestle's Buckeyes. And so many times, it's not only the amount of penalties in the yardage, Often the story is told by when the penalty comes and if it comes on a big gain a positive play Then it's amplified that much more Ted Ginn at the bottom of your screen first down for the Hoosiers Smith sets up a screen Pittman gets a block and he's got some running room Down to the 46 yard line of Indiana well executed little screen play by the Buckeyes and a good block on the flank sprung it and Weingold, the center, number 55, watch him leak outside. Right in front of the receiver Pittman right there. And if that ball does not go behind the line of scrimmage, Mangold is going to get called for being downfield. Very good execution because Pittman was right on that hairy edge of being downfield. Buckeyes on the opening drive of the third quarter. First and 10 at the Hoosier 45. Delay. Schnitger up the middle to the 39, a gain of seven to the studio. Mike Leeson. Well, we check on Nebraska and Missouri playing for Big 12 North supremacy. Okay, I take that back. Driver's seat. Zach Taylor goes upstairs. Nate Swift and the Huskers have regained the lead now. They're actually tied in the second, 24. Thank you, Mike. Well, there's nothing supreme about the Big 12 North. The <laughs> supremacy is on the Big 12 South. Yeah. It doesn't matter who comes out of the North. The South has that that conference under control right now. The South has a few teams that might be able to win that North. Second down. Set. 
They came with a blitz. Killian was there, but Kenny Kendall, the principal blitzer, the principal sack master on that play. And Kendall probably saves a touchdown because what we don't see from this look, you can see the pressure just speed around the corner is the tight end was running free right down the middle of the field. If Smith could have fought about a half a second more, that was at least an opportunity for a long pass play to a tight end. And that middle of the field has become an issue right now for Indiana. Remember, the free safety Troy Grossfeld went down with an injury and Lumpkin is in there and there's been some holes. Third down, Buckeyes. To the flank, the cutback. Ted Ginn, nowhere to go. And he stormed back at the ball, taken away, and here come the Hoosiers. Pedroza, all the way. Touchdown, Indiana. They held up Ted Ginn and robbed him. Back into the game. The Cooper Tire defensive stop of the game. The quick screen to Ginn right there. The extra effort sometimes pays off and sometimes doesn't. Pinoza with the heads up play and every defensive coordinator, young and old alike, love that type of thing. Stand them up, get some help, and start breaking in the football and good things happen. Flying Smith for the point after. Nice play by Rhett Klein Schmidt on the hole. That was a bad snap. He got it down through the uprights, and Indiana is right back in it. Seven point ball game. Pinozo scores for the Hoosiers. Well, the man of the moment in Bloomington, former fullback John Pinozo. He literally stole the football from Ted Ginn Jr. and took it 57 yards to the end zone. Points off turnovers. Swinging big today. Pinozo definitely knew what to do with the football once he got it. He hasn't been touching the ball much this year after his fullback in of the past three years. But what a tremendous play and a timely play for this team. Here's the kickoff. Again, it carries to Ted Ginn, two yards deep. Got a block from Holmes. Could not break the tackle of the 20-yard line. Wayne Wood is again is right here and then the other guys start stripping the football and Pinozo does a great job again is secured by two of his teammates and so then your opportunity is to get that ball out of there and you wonder if the whistle was a little bit late because it looked like again was stopped but remember the premature whistle that was already denied Indiana of a huge opportunity earlier in this half three receivers set three wide receivers handy the tight end in motion first down Buckeyes Pittman to the outside being chased by a posse of Hoosiers and out of bounds losing three back to the 17 yard line let's get back to the sidelines of Quint Keston Wayne coach Terry Hapner one of his favorite sayings is that you win with the right people put the right people in the right seats on the bus and John Pinozo is a great example of that played fullback for three years here had three receiving touchdowns in 2002 when Terry Hepner took the job, he says, hey, I need a tough guy to play middle linebacker. Look John in the eye. John said, hey, coach, I'm tough. I, I can play that role. And here he is playing middle linebacker and scoring his first rushing touchdown of his career. Well, it was either that or don't play because his position fullback went out of the playbook in the spread offense. Pittman trying to make a play. And he takes Porter out of bounds at the 30. Four yard line, first down. Ohio State on a 18 yard gain. We go back to Mike Gleason to the studio. Wayne, Brett Bassin, and Tyrell Sutton have combined for all 18 rushing touchdowns. Things are starting to snowball up in East Lansing. Bassin, a second rushing touchdown of the day. Coach, I've got a note here from Brett. He says, Who's the best quarterback right now in the Big Ten? I may have to change my mind on that. Michigan's blocked the field goal. There we go. Special teams again, but Iowa still leads by four in Iowa City, 14 10. Wayne. How about those Wildcats? Holy cow, 35 to 7. 
First down, Ohio State. The pitch, Pittman on the flank. Good block from Ginn. Pittman across the 50 to the 48-yard line of Indiana. First down, Buckeyes. We saw the scores a few moments ago. Here are the standings in the Big Ten Conference. Penn State and Illinois play later today, as does uh, Wisconsin and Purdue. That's going to sort out as those teams start to beat on each other the rest of this year. And I believe it's the first time in 20 years that someone hasn't started 4-0 in the Big Ten. There's a lot of cannibalizing to go on as the season unwinds. First down. Wells breaking it to the outside. To the 30, to the 25. Maurice Wells getting the call. A true freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida. 26-yard run. And out on the edges, when the point of attack is initially inside and then the running back bounces it, Indiana's having a hard time adjusting to that right now. And that's where the difference in speed shows up, is when you don't defense it well once the secondary move is made, and this time to the edge. Look at those yards piling up big time. The dominance of Ohio State, but not on the scoreboard. It's only a seven-point ball game. Smith doing what he does best to the end zone. Touchdown! Tremendous effort by Troy Smith. A 23-yard touchdown gallop. Troy Smith doing such a good job of decision making in the running game. Quarterbacks not only make decisions in the passing game and reading defenses, but in the run game, particularly on the option. Indiana has had a very difficult time defensing that speed option with the quarterback Smith quick to the edge. You know what? I don't think they were able to duplicate that on their scout team. That's what it looks like to me. How do you duplicate the kind of athletic ability that Ohio State has on the perimeter, including Troy Smith when he gets to the outside? He can hurt you more with his feet than his arm, and he does right here to Indiana. Welcome back to Bloomington. Ohio State back in front by 14, 24 to 10. Troy Smith has just capped a five play, 79 yard drive. Houston on the kickoff. Bennett. No, it's taken by the up back in front of Bennett. And racing out of there, Jakeen Gilmore. One man to beat. Able to get by the kicker, Houston and Jakeen Gilmore. Out of bounds inside the 35-yard line of Ohio State. A big play that the Hoosiers desperately needed. The Ohio State came back and answered once that Indiana really seized the momentum in this game, and now Indiana's turn to answer. Gilmore does a very good job of getting to the wedge. Very well blocked on the return to the right side, and then it's just speed to try to finish that play. But I'll tell you what, Indiana needed an, a huge answer to what Smith just did on that answer himself. Ohio State hasn't been very good on the road because of they haven't been able to answer under adverse conditions. The ultimate BMW ultimate drive of the game. Troy Smith capped it. Maurice Wells had a 34 yard run during it. Here's the reverse. Oh and their option pass downfield coming back for it. Hardy got a first down on the option from Thigpen. Well done. Well, the Blake Powers can't get Hardy the football. Let Thigpen try to do it right there. What's interesting, on the reverse right here, he gives it to Thigpen, and then it's underthrown. I don't believe it was intentionally, but that was the only way that pass was going to be completed. I think Nate Sally, the deep safety, you saw early in that replay, he was signaling, he knew it was coming, but no one else did. A 20-yard gain. Great point. And it's first down to the 12-yard line. Chris Taylor. Schlegel met him and cut him off at the pass. Great play. Well, Quint Kestick, you've got a little bit more on uh, 
the big man here in Indiana, Hardy. That's right, When I spoke to Coach Hefner at halftime about James Hardy. He only had one catch in the first half. He says Ohio State is rolling the coverage to him, but the uh, excuse me, but Indiana has to take their shots downfield. He said those shots will probably come from other players. So Hardy being used as a decoy so far in the first half. He's had two catches so far. He's had an Achilles problem, and he's got some kind of a leg injury right there he's trying to work out. He's not on the field. Second down and 10. Powers. Hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Nobody there in the corner of the end zone, and Powers was hammered to the ground. Boy, they had Patterson and Kudla, a couple of defensive linemen meeting at the quarterback. Now this is one of those, let's meet at the quarterback here in about two and a half seconds, and right there, both Kudla, 57, and Patterson do a good job of not giving Powers any time, really, to let the play develop down the field in the red zone, and that really has been the difference. No time to look things over. Indiana one of nine on third down conversions. They came in sixth in the conference at 44 percent. Hardy at the very top of your screen. Powers looking that way but doesn't have time. No one blocked Mike Kudla who for the second play in a row blows up an Indiana opportunity. And it was really the same stunt that they ran just a minute ago. Kudla just just beats him quickly off the, off the snap. This is the best defense I have seen in college football this season, certainly in the Big Ten. You can see 97 Patterson was going to loop around the, the edge there on that twist, but Kudla didn't need any help. 38-yard field goal attempt. He had a 39-yarder earlier. Joe Klein-Smith. Long enough, no good. No good. The Buckeyes turn back to Hoosiers. And with 7.48 left to go in this third quarter, the Buckeyes appear defensively to be in firm control as Jim Tressel applauds. Wayne Larrabee along with Kelly Stauffer, Quint Kesnick. Welcome back to Bloomington. Indiana has had the football offensively but just 13 minutes and four seconds compared to 24-08 for the Ohio State offense. And the Buckeyes hand the lead by 14. Indiana has been unable to sustain any kind of offense against the Ohio State defense, which has been dominant here today. The only touchdown scored by the Hoosiers was scored by their defense on a fumble return of 57 yards for a touchdown by John Pinoza. 19 first downs for the Buckeyes, just five for the Hoosiers. First and 10, Ohio State. Pittman around the end. Lumpkin supported well from the secondary, no gain. Down to the sidelines and Quint Kestick. Quint? Wayne, we're on the north side of the stadium right now. The lawn area that they've opened up to fans today. For $10, you can sit in this grass area and you see a, a bunch of three or 400 fans here enjoying uh, the game from a view that's pretty good, actually. We're in the sun. It's not too wet out. It rained all night. We've got a good view. Amara is a young fan here who's enjoyed a little tailgate and the action. Uh, how do you like your Hoosiers today? They're doing all right. They're doing all right. What about that last missed field goal? Um... No comment on that last missed field goal, but Amara and these fans, Wayne, uh, certainly getting a first-class view up here in this extra seating. All right, thank you, Quint. She kind of sounded like one of the uh, coaches we talked to. No comment. On that. That's what you're seeing from there. It is from that look. Amara's looking right at that, and she had a good view of that field goal. Yeah, that, you could tell right away. You know, wasted a 67-yard kickoff return by Gilmore, and that's a huge story. When Indiana's struggling offensively, you have to get points in other ways. Pinozo got it on the good defensive play. They needed to get points right there off that good kickoff return. Ohio State third down. Three of nine, 33 percent today. Smith is deaf. Adianju got there first. Kenny Kendall put him away. Back inside the 25-yard line. Fourth sack of the day. And this is a typical way that Indiana gets pressure. Just rushing the four-down lineman. The defensive ends, both Kendall and Adianju, meet at the quarterback, and that is the Hoosier way. They don't bring extra people very often. Ohio State brings at least five every time. Indiana very seldom does. Make that three sacks, not four, for Indiana today. Yeah. 
Bennett. Oh, they're going to throw a flag on Lumpkin for a block. For a block in the back. He tried to pull off, but they'll back him up on this one. Yeah, Lumpkin is that point man on the return. He has to get his block, allowing the punt returner to get to that wall. He tried to pull up, but didn't quite get it there done. There is no foul on the play. First down. That's a great job of officiating. Yep. Because look at the intention of Lumpka coming in right at the top. He's trying to avoid him right there. A good job of officiating one overriding the other and I believe in the end getting that play exactly right we've seen that officiating teamwork on a couple of occasions here today and it has been very good so it's the way a crew should work together get the play right that's all that counts and they got it right first down at the 28 yard line for the Hoosiers in their own territory powers under immediate pressure and his receiver dropped it on the play. That was O'Neal, the tight end. He's the receiving tight end. Matt O'Neill, a junior from Terre Haute, Indiana. Powers has struggled with accuracy today, especially on the deep ball. That time he needed his receiver to help him out a little bit because uh, he was under immediate pressure. Well, that lack of accuracy hasn't benefited number 82 right there, not getting him the football. But if you're playing a defense that gets pressure on you, there's the perceived pressure even when there's no real pressure. And it's hard as a quarterback to set your feet when you expect to feel pressure every time. Second down. Powers 9 of 23. Nowhere to go for Taylor. He made the catch and did well to hang on. My goodness, I'll tell you something. These Buckeyes, that time the freshman Jenkins came up with a hit. Jenkins is a very physical corner watching him this afternoon. He's a decent cover guy, but more impressively, he comes out of his coverage and absolutely puts the wood to people and is a very sure tackler. Jenkins, the freshman from New Jersey. One of the top safeties coming out of high school football a season ago. Third down and nine. Powers, good protection. Going deep. Intercepted by the Buckeyes. Mitchell down the sidelines. Brandon Mitchell reaching for the end zone. Touchdown! <laughs> 57 yard return. About the only thing the Buckeye defense has not done today was score touchdown and there they did it right here when powers trying to find hardy to get him in the football game this ball is just terribly underthrown right there the defender able to come off mitchell's able to come off that hash without any problem whatsoever because that ball was underthrown and just hovering up there 57 yard return by brandon mitchell the last five yards through the air mitchell that is <laughs> Made himself a projectile into the end zone. The extra point is good. And the Ohio State defense has now done it all. They've stopped Indiana repeatedly. They forced turnovers, and now they've scored. Excuse me, Wayne. What Quint talked about earlier, Hepner mentioned at halftime, rolling coverage to him. You can see your booty right there, 26 is the underneath coverage, and then Mitchell is going to be coming over the top right there. That's what rolling coverage is. The safety's over the top, the corner's underneath. They bracket him short, they bracket him long, but this ball has to go up and give your 6-7 receiver a chance to make a play. He doesn't have a chance if you underthrow the football. If you make a mistake with this play, and that, again, the hit came after the pass was gone. If you make a mistake as a quarterback, Kelly, with that, you want to make the mistake long, right? Absolutely, especially when if you have a 6-7 receiver, you have to give your guy a chance. And Hardy had no chance on that underthrown ball right there. So Ohio State extends to its biggest lead of the day, 31-10. They have led throughout. Brandon Mitchell, kind of a forgotten man in that secondary with a former starter. Well, he was a backup safety. But is the nickel back and we're seeing a lot of action obviously on the field today with the spread offense being run by Indiana. Josh Houston's kickoff. Not going to be returned. To the studio and Mike Gleason. Wayne, look who surfaces for Michigan and Iowa City, Coach. Captain Steve Breston, where have you been all year? You get him the ball out in the open field and let him use that athletic ability, Mike. 
Rustin with 156 return yards last week gets a touchdown here at 17-14 Michigan on top. Linemen from tight ends helping out, from fullbacks helping out blocking. It's a missed tackle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, there's a, there's really a theme to that. If you talk to some of the old school guys defensively, tackling not only at the college level but the NFL level is an atrocious. Yep. First and ten, Indiana. Yamar Washington. Ohio State, the toughest defense of the Big Ten, the second toughest in the nation to run against. Gain of about two or three. In the Big Ten, we mentioned the score. You saw the score from Iowa City. But uh, Iowa trying to go to four to one in conference play. Really, now that's what counts for most, all of these teams. Penn State will play later tonight. Michigan already three losses on the season and just two and two in conference play. Second down, Powers on the option. Nice play on the flank made by Schlegel, the middle linebacker. Had to go a long way to make that tackle and got it done. And when you just see how difficult it is to get wide against this Ohio State defense. I mean, they are so tremendous at getting off of blocks. The linebacker, the second level, and you have linemen coming out on you to get off the block and still force a tackle for a loss. The two James, the King James Court at the bottom of your screen. Going the other way is Powers. Penalty marker is down. Believe on the coverage, you'll have a penalty coming up as Gilmore latches on. That was a tough catch for the defender in his shirt. That coverage was so good, they threw a flag on top of it. <laughs> Sometimes a flag nullifies, nullifies some of the best coverage that you'll ever see. <laughs> Pass interference. Number 26 on the defense. The ball will be put at the spot of the foul with an automatic first down. Ashton Ubody, the guilty party. And way that Ubody was once again, he was rolled up that time on Gilmore. But in a two deep secondary, you have safeties on the hashes. You really roll up on both outside receivers. So Gilmore is getting it, and Hardy is also mm -hmm. getting it. Gilmore is finding a way to get open. Hardy isn't. Three receivers to the field or wide side of the formation. Quick toss to the flag. Wow, well read, you Bode. Textbook tackle on Thigpen as they were trying to get him in space, and he's the guy with the speed we saw him earlier today make a big play. Running the bubble screen right here, and you have to get a better block out of number one right there on number 26. You voted Gilmore has to block somebody. You have to anticipate the defense is looking in at that bubble screen. He's going to be react right now. You Bode read it beautifully, didn't you? Yeah, he? absolutely. Second down, loss of yardage on the play, a four yards. Second at 14. Screen. And again, not much there. Screens, reverses, anything wide. Ohio State has reacted very well. Yamara Washington, just a short gain as Green redirected his pass rush into pass coverage and made the tackle after a gain of three. And Wayne, that word right there that you just used, redirect, is exactly what Bill Lynch said yesterday when you asked him, how about running some misdirection stuff? Draws, screens, reverses. And Lynch said that this Ohio State defense reacts, redirects so well, those plays don't work either. Three-man down line. Four-man rush, Schlegel coming, and so is A.J. Hawk. And he makes the sack. Hawk had four of them last week in the game against Michigan State to be the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Also in on that sack, David Patterson. And you, you get in third and long against this team, and this is the result. One of about three or four guys is going to get there. That time it was A.J. Hawk. Another millisecond, and Kudla would have also <laughs> been on the quarterback, and that's why they lead this conference in sacks with 28 coming into today. Sixth tackle for A.J. Hawk today. Tyson Beattie and whistles hold up the action early. This has got to be an infraction, a false start against the uh, punting team. Prior to the snap, false start. Number 99 on the offense. Still fourth down. You're waiting. The people that are getting a chance to watch this 
Ohio State defense really are to put it in perspective watching one of the best defenses that you will see. Mm -hmm. I mean it's hard to be better than this group on the field yeah. right now. It, no Not question. just because of those linebackers but they're solid everywhere. They really are. Great coverage on the corners. Excellent defensive line. Tyson Beatty. Good leverage into this kick. Ted Ginn going to make a play on it from the 37. Dancing to the 45 and he's south to the 48 yard line where it'll be first and 10. Be sure to join us next Saturday at noon Eastern as these Indiana Hoosiers travel to Michigan State to take on the Spartans. Check your local listings for the game and the time in your area. Spartans have their hands full with a uh, pack of Wildcats up in uh, East Lansing and uh, Northwestern. In case you hadn't noticed, sending another message. We got 49 on the board, leading 49 to 7 in the second half up at uh, Michigan State. Yeah, Northwestern wasn't being talked about at all in no. preseason, and they're slowly creeping to the top of the Big Ten Conference standings. Ohio State, good field position once again to start a drive. Pittman following his blocking. Nice play made by Greg Brown sifting through on the defensive tackle. No time Watch this. this is the block field goal right before halftime Here last week Cross. in Columbus for Michigan State. In a, a kind of a hurried situation as you saw. The kick was blocked, I believe, by Sally and picked up by Ubodi. And Ubodi took it all the way for the touchdown. He is the special teams player of the week for that effort. He went 72 yards for the touchdown and John L. Williams was really upset and that may have been the turning point of the season for the Spartans. Who knows? That may be the hangover that Northwestern has seen out of the Spartans today. Gonzalez the man in motion on second and nine. Pittman pace and run nowhere to go. The linebackers Pinozo and Killian collaborate on the stop no gain and it's third and nine Ohio State that action we just saw in that blocked field goal was really a coaching snafu mm -hmm. that's what John L was so upset about said the kids are playing so hard and the coaches are screwing it up 31 to 10 here Ohio State and for college football crisp and cool here in Bloomington. Ohio State, their defense scored in the third quarter. And that has helped stake them to a comfortable lead as we head to the fourth. Wayne Larrabee, along with Kelly Stalker, Quint Kestick. Good to have you with us from Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. Buckeyes on third down. Smith under pressure, and it's incomplete. Pittman, the intended receiver, that was Adi Anju who knocked the ball away from the intended receiver and the pressure provided by Kyle Killian on the quarterback. It was interesting. Arianju ended up defending that screen because they ran a stunt and from his left defensive end position he actually ended up right in Pittman's hip pocket. Kind of lucked into it but made a very heads up play. So punt formation time coming up. Now, A.J. Trapasso gets a low snap, gets the kick away, and Boone's a high one. Fair catch signal made, and drifting back to make the catch, Lance Bennett at the 10-yard line. 43-yard punt, though return. Opening minute, fourth quarter. Ohio State in firm control. Back in Indiana, opening minute, fourth quarter. Ohio State, 14th ranked team of the nation. Leading by 21. Indiana Hoosiers, this is their eighth start of a drive at their 20-yard line or worse. They start this one at the 10. It's one of the best runs of the day for the Hoosiers as uh, Chris Taylor finds some daylight. Memorial Stadium in Bloomington filled to capacity. A lot of red here. Ohio State and Indiana, along with Quint Kesnick on the sidelines. Kelly Stoper and Wayne Larrabee, great to have you with us. Ohio State has won a lot here. They've been very comfortable in these environs. Second down, Chris Taylor again. Not much there. Ohio State, the 14th. 14th ranked team in the nation 
and got it going early in the ball game. Santonio Holmes on a hard slant, 23-yard touchdown reception, 7-0 early going first quarter. Troy Smith scored twice. The quarterback faking the option there for one yard. And then a 23-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. And then the defense got into the act from an offensive standpoint. Brandon Mitchell, the interception return of 57 yards to a score. Third down, Indiana. Powers. Good throw, good catch. Jakeen Gilmore, first down. 25-yard line of the Hoosiers. Gain of about 10 yards. The recap of this afternoon's game, if you just joined us. Pittman has ground out those 128 yards. Ohio State has had a heavy time of possession edge and yardage edge. And, of course, the leading receiver in the Big Ten, James Hardy, has been very quiet today. And all 10 points for IU have come off Ohio State miscues. First and 10, Indiana. Taylor for short yardage. Back to the studio, Mike Leeson. Marcus Hagens, 306 yards, a couple of touchdowns as he's almost single-handedly knocked off the Seminoles. Hagens, 108 yards and an INT. And look at Virginia only has five points against North Carolina. Cedric Holt right there with the pick for Carolina. 7-5 UNC. Thank you very much, Mike. More action from the ACC. That Virginia program, he, now Groh's got that club coming along. Good coach. Second and eight. nowhere to go didn't take long the Buckeye pass rush has been in evidence here today they're the best in the Big Ten at it. and that time uh, Jay Richardson got the sack we take a look at the Liberty Mutual play of the game and the play of the game is this one right here underthrown pass intended for Hardy Mitchell goes the distance and the key there intended for Hardy powers trying to figure out a way to get Hardy the football get him into this game and under throwing a ball down the sideline with the safety on the hash is not the way to get it done. Third down. Powers threw it behind Bailey. James Bailey, it would have been a one handed catch behind him. And it has not been Blake Powers' day today. It really hasn't. And that is a tremendous look at what pressure does even when pressure isn't there. If a defense has a reputation of getting a lot of pressure and they get a lot of pressure, even when a quarterback gets time, he doesn't have it in his mind to set his feet and make a good accurate throw. Exactly, and this is something they've been working on all week here. Get rid of the football in under 2.6 seconds. Floater. Ted Ginn makes the play at the 40 and he's gobbled up immediately. Tracy Porter arrived with the football and made the tackle. No gain on the return. 39-yard punt. On the phone upstairs looking for some completions. You know, you know after a long game, that paint starts to peel. <laughs> you can get a little help cleaning that paint off your skin. Let's take a look at the Outback uh, Steakhouse outstanding uh, back of the game. Antonio Pittman, he's kind of grounded out here. 128 yards, 23 carries, 5.6 yard average, and has been a major component in Ohio State's uh, maintaining possession of the football. Heavy time of possession advantage to the Buckeyes. And really, we've seen the way Ohio State needs to win games. A tremendous overpowering defense, a running game, that is consistent and a quarterback that makes right decisions and this team is going to be a team that's going to have a lot to say about this conference. Ohio State's had the football almost seven and a half more minutes than Indiana. Buckeyes have averaged starting on their 41 yard line where they begin this series and Pittman gets a couple of yards. Meanwhile, while Ohio State plays on roughly a 59 yard field. Indiana has been starting back at its 21 yard line so they've been playing on a 79 yard field Big that, fi that field position is the result of a defense that overpowers an offense consistently before long the field position begins to migrate in your favor if your defense is consistently winning second down Smith running option 
Oh, coming back the other way. You know, when I watch Troy Smith, to me, that's what he does best. That's what he is most comfortable doing. Running option, making the decision on the run with his feet. Well, it's really the, the Michael Vick experiment or, you know, the quarterbacks that have so much talent to run the football. It's hard and almost impossible to make them a pocket passer. You have to find that middle of the road still use their ability to run good decisions in the passing game but don't harness them too much smith looking to the air holmes on the crossing route to the 30 25 and he's upended by porter at the 20 yard line of indiana you know, Wayne, and having said all of that it's about getting protection and being able to throw the football holmes is just going to cross the coverage underneath right there. Pinozo tries to pick him up as he comes into his own. Obviously, that's a mismatch. But it all starts with tremendous protection in Indiana not getting pressure on Smith really any the entire day. Make that Damian Jones on a nice tackle, but 27 yards downfield. And the Buckeyes are at the 21-yard line of Indiana. Ted Ginn in motion. Smith to Ginn, hammered out of bounds by Porter. Time now for the Red Roof Inn Red Zone proficiency. Save at Red Roof Inns with Red's hot deals. This is today. They are two for three in the Red Zone. Are the Buckeyes a touchdown and a field goal? You know that's not that's not bad. I mean they're going to have to as the Buckeyes contend for the conference title. They're going to have to get touchdowns more efficiently in that red zone than they are right now. Jim Trestle talking about his quarterback Troy Smith getting better and better as he goes along and making the right decisions in the passing game. This time the running game Pittman picking his way very patient runner. He gets a couple of yards as the Hoosier defense still playing hard despite the scoreboard. Mitchell makes the stop on that play. Inside of 10 minutes to go in the game, Ohio State looking to up its record to five and two overall and three and one in Big Ten play. This Indiana defense has just gotten worn out. You can see the yards are mounting in the second half. Remember, Indiana's defense spent a ton of time, 19 minutes on the field in just the first half. Pittman. And again, the Hoosiers know that the Buckeyes want to control the clock and just run some time. Respond to the running play, and I believe the Buckeyes are short of that first down. It'll be fourth and one coming up. And they're going to get a little more work for Josh Houston. Field goal unit comes in. What's interesting, Wayne, is you can hear the Buckeye fans right here in this stadium getting a little antsy about that call. They're just not comfortable with this offense. You know, getting into those situations where they just say, oh, we're just going to line up and kick a field goal. 29-yard attempt. Right down the boulevard. Ohio State adds to its lead 34 to 10 Buckeyes with a little over eight and a half to go in the fourth quarter on a beautiful day in Bloomington. Welcome back to Bloomington Brutus very much at home here the Ohio State uh, mascot. I thought he was in the restaurant with us last night. He got really he angry when familiar. the the uh, waitress dropped something on the floor. He was ready to go. He was pumped up last night. Here's the kickoff. Lance Bennett. Oh, my goodness. O'Neal came flying through the air to make that hit. Let's fly to the studio of Mike Gleason. Wayne, Coach Cooper said pregame, be strong in the kicking game. 32-yarder Kyle Schlicker, last play of regulation. He is perfect inside the 40. Perfect. Still, it's tied at 17. Michigan, four games, decided three points or less. They're for overtime. Again. Ooh. Well, they don't call him Schlicker the kicker for nothing <laughs> out there in Iowa City. Well, how about Michigan? I mean, learning how to, to win in those games may be valuable at this point in time in the season. Yamar Washington on first down. Gets about three. 
You saw the uh, Iowa Michigan game going to overtime. We'll take a look at this. That's a 22 game home field winning streak the Hawkeyes have on the line here today. And Lloyd Carr coming up at a milestone in Big Ten play. Well, Michigan has had so many close games already on the on the year. In a sense, you get comfortable with that as a player. One, you get comfortable and let yourself in the position again, <laughs> but then you get comfortable with you will do enough to win once again. Second down for Indiana. Screen pass, Washington juggled through off the time of the play, but the Buckeyes were responding anyway. And quickly in on that uh, tackle was Joel Penton. McFarland in at quarterback. Graham McFarland, the junior out of Birmingham, Alabama. Graham is a baseball player of note here at Indiana. Hoosiers have a lot of two sport uh, stars in their lineup. Hardy, another one there. Basketball, we spoke of him. But to Graham McFarland, if I'm not mistaken, center fielder of the baseball team. And a good one. McFarland incomplete. I had my uh, two sports stars mixed up. McFarland is a right handed reliever, not an outfielder for the Hoosiers. And he can come in and throw some fire late in the game and strike a few people out. And powers, you know, on the headset right there. You can see right 13 out of 29. The one interception that went back for a touchdown just never felt comfortable way you could you could see that from up here he never really set his feet. I think that clock was going too fast in his head and it never felt like he had enough time. Tyson Beatty's punt. Ted Ginn from the 39. Goodness does he make people miss. He is off to the races to the 10 to the 5 touchdown. 57 yards, Ted Ginn with the exclamation point for Ohio State today. When we talked about Ginn at the open, that it's kind of an explosion waiting to happen, and it couldn't be soon enough for the Buckeye Nation, and this is what you get out of this young man. You can see right there, he starts up the middle really to just set up his blockers intending the entire time to bounce it to his left and when he did there was absolutely no Hoosier in sight. So the Ohio State Buckeye fans begin a Ted Ginn chant here at Memorial Stadium John Houston adds the extra point it is 41 to 10 Ohio State just under seven minutes to go in the fourth. What a special player you can see right there. He does a good job of hesitating inside to give his outside blockers to the left the angle and then he knows how to finish a play. I think oh, I tell you what he just sped down the sidelines speaking of the sidelines. Let's get down to Quinn when when we spoke to coach Dressel this week he says nobody is punting the ball uh, to Ted Ginn. No one's kicking to us. They're either doing the rugby style kicks or the directional kicks or kicking the ball out of bounds uh, or intentionally punting to Santonio San Holmes. But you see why uh, and maybe Indiana should have choose that strategy instead of putting that one uh, in the hands of Ted Ginn. Fifth career punt return uh, touchdown. You know, I, I heard Coach Trussell talk about that, but the numbers from last year compared to this year really don't bear that out. Last year, Ginn had 15 punt returns, four up for touchdowns for almost 400 yards. Obviously, he was productive, but coming into today, he already had 11 punt returns and 11 kickoff returns. He's had double the touches in 05 that he has in 04. I just don't think they've done a very good job of blocking things on the special team. So Ginn and Holmes haven't been nearly as productive as they were collectively. In Especially the five men up front that started off. They have not done a good job there, but they have today. Gilmore had a long return earlier today in the second half. Penalty marker coming out late. Penalty marker down. Ryan Miranda was going to get called for a late hit. Again, an unprotected player being blindsided when it had absolutely nothing to do with mm. the play that was being made. After the play, personal foul. Number 35 on the return team, 
That penalty is enforced 15 yards from the end of the run. Well, we've seen one of those penalties on Ohio State, now one on in uh, Indiana. Ted Ginn is an all purpose kind of guy. And he just equaled his career best in yardage. We'll get that up for you in a minute. 279 yards, all purpose offense for Teddy Ginn. Graham McFarland on the handoff. Josiah Sears was a fullback last year in this offense gets the call here and picks up about three yards well again is is well over 300 if you figure that 96 yard kickoff return that went in for a touchdown that got called back about 35 yards because of a play behind a spot of penalty play behind the play that really had no impact on again taking at the distance second down for Indiana as we wind it down coming up on six minutes ago in the game 41 to 10 Ohio State whether they've got backups in there or starters the going is tough on the ground against this defense our player of the game is brought to you by Jack Link's beef jerky feed your wild side there is our player of the game Troy Smith did an outstanding job overall but really the decisions he made on the ground running the option uh, they stand out today and that's that's how I would sum up those numbers right there efficient decision making and when you have probably the best defense in all of college football that's what you need out of your quarterback is efficient decision making. And you know, when you think about it, Ohio State, and, and we've commented a couple of times today, I mean, people expecting the Buckeyes to score 40-some points a game every time out, and a lot of questioning in Buckeye Nation about the offense of Ohio State and Jim Tressel, but when you have this good a defense, and I'm sure Coach Tressel is thinking about this, just don't screw it up offensively, and we'll be fine. You're right, and I, and I think they've taken a step forward from just not screwing it up. They're allowing Troy Smith to do more than they were in the past. You know, it was manage a football game and let Nugent kick a field goal in the past and play good defense. They're a step above that, but not quite as far as the Buckeye fans would like them to be. Penalty marker down quickly. BD's punt. Gonzalez makes the catch, knocked down immediately. Penalty marker thrown, though, on the back of the other side of the field. Thrown very early. 45-yard punt, no return. Illegal formation. Fewer than seven men on the line of scrimmage on the kicking team. That penalty will de be declined. First down. We mentioned our player of the game, Troy Smith, and what a job he did here today. And again, made good decisions in the passing game, but he was explosive with his feet in this ball game here today. Here's a little bit of the passing game. That's a hard slant. Antonio Holmes, good throw and great reaction by Holmes. And then Smith fakes that option, goes in from a yard and a half out. That was in the first half. This is in the third quarter. And this 23-yard scamper by Smith to another touchdown. And he showed you everything there. Justin Zwick in at quarterback for Ohio State. Freshman Maurice Wells getting the call there. Justin Zwick started the, the season as a starter at quarterback because Troy Smith was serving a one-game suspension. Zwick was the starting quarterback going into last season and was eventually replaced by Smith at quarterback in a game against Indiana in Columbus, and that changed everything. But Zwick was a highly decorated quarterback out of Massillon, Ohio, Washington High School. Injured his left shoulder late last season in a loss to the Hawkeyes and wound up, wound up sitting up, uh, wound, wound out sitting the rest of the season. Zwick on the slant. Roy Hall for a first down to the 45 yard line, 14 yard gain. Back to the studio, Mike Gleason. Waiting to get you up to speed on that big 12 North battle between Nebraska and Missouri. We talked about the big numbers Brad Smith had in the first half. Now he has 210 yards rushing, three touchdowns, including this one as Missouri takes a seven point lead. Iowa has just kicked a field goal in overtime. They're up 2017. Michigan has the football. <laughs> Missouri has always played Nebraska tough. 
part of tradition in that part of the country. Second down. Zwick knocked down on a strong bull rush by Victor Adianju. In the Big Ten standings, Mike told you that Iowa ta has taken the lead in overtime over Michigan. And uh, if the Hawkeyes win, they improve to 4-1. and one. Meanwhile, Michigan already three losses on the season would slump to 4-4. Four and four. That's hard to believe with the kind of a talent and ability level they've got up there in Ann Arbor. And there's so much jockeying for position right now. Still fairly early in this season to try to figure out that race. There's going to be a lot of changes made in that lineup before it's all said and done. Nice hole for Wells. Well, he's an explosive one. He's going to be a guy to keep an eye on. The true freshman out of Jacksonville, Florida, Maurice Wells, a burst of 15 yards. The Buckeyes schedule coming up. They'll continue this road trip to Minnesota. That'll be a tough one. And then Illinois Northwestern at home in uh, Michigan to finish. And I, I like that schedule for Ohio State. Minnesota you know, can run the football, and there's no better team really in the nation at stopping, stopping the run than this Buckeye defense. This could be a heck of a game to watch next week. Third down. Wells trying to escape but cannot. And again, no question the Hoosier defense has played hard here, and that was the true freshman Geno Johnson getting the tackle there, short of a first down to the Buckeyes, and so they will turn it back over to the Hoosiers. Wells a brings a little different look to this mm -hmm. offense than Pittman does. A Maybe little more burst. A little more burst, a little more quickness, you yeah. think? He, he gets to the hole a lot quicker. Yeah. Pittman is, is patient, which you need to be as a running back, but he's typically more of a downhill runner wells looks like he also has that ability to you know with a little wiggle in his step to get through there quickly and make something happen trapasso's punt fair catch signal made early lance bennett able to haul it in well wayne in your vast experience <laughs> what does uh coach hepner need to be doing with his program right now. He set it up. He circled this game on yeah. the calendar when he took the job. Now what happens when you go out and get it handed to you like the Buckeyes have today? You know, now what do you tell your troops? You know, it's interesting. He said that this is a game, a program game, and I think he was talking about not just what IU would do on the field, but what they would do in the stands, and would there be the support there that this program so desperately needs? And I think that's happened to the affirmative. They've had a, a lot of fans. They've sold out this building, and it's not just Ohio State fans here, but it'll be interesting to see how he reacts now after putting so much into this. He would like to create a rivalry with Ohio State, much like what Bill McCartney did when he went to Colorado years ago and said, with that downtrodden program, said we're going to take Nebraska which at the time was the top team in the Big Eight. That's our rival. We're going to make them our rival and it took a number of years before Colorado was able to overcome Nebraska but eventually they did and Coach Hefner said took a look at that Ohio State program said that's who we want to be. That's who we want to be. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts and what his feelings are following this game. They've not been able to get it done on the field. I wonder what his impression is of the, the atmosphere of the fans the other intangibles that go into a program that's a great point all the other things except what happened on the field he talked about on the field off the field collectively wanting to see something and I believe off the field you saw it. there was excitement here anytime that Indiana got something done and had a little life you could see the people were into it but you have to give the fans something to hang their hat on and right now on the field Indiana doesn't do that consistently well in conference and to their credit the Ohio State Buckeyes did not allow Indiana to make much noise here today this is a great Ohio State defense and uh, their offense is getting better and I got a feeling their best football is ahead of them in November and then into January rambling run right at the uh, Ohio State defense by Josiah Sears but hasn't been nearly enough of that Jerome Jackson has just scored on a two yard touchdown run in overtime and Michigan has defeated Iowa and snapped the Hawkeyes 22 game home field winning streak a huge win for the Michigan Wolverines time winding down to this one Mike Gleason 
We'll have all the details coming up. And we'll be back to wrap things up. Final play, perhaps. Sears getting a workout of this fourth quarter. But what an impressive win for the Ohio State Buckeyes. They came into a building that was hot for upset, ready for upset. And Jim Trestle and company just calmly put away the Indiana Hoosiers 41 to 10. Impressive performance by Trestle and the Buckeyes. Thank you very much, Mike. Big win there for Michigan on the road. And their nemesis, the Ohio State Buckeyes, a clear cut victory here, 41 to 10, Kelly. Well, Ohio State got it done today. I think you've, you're seeing a formula emerge. Obviously, tremendous defense, a quarterback that can just manage the game and make the right decisions. And Indiana, Coach Hepner knows that they have a long ways to go. Once again, the final score, Ohio State 41, Indiana 10. Be sure to join us next Saturday, noon Eastern, as the Indiana Hoosiers travel to Michigan State to take on the Spartans. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Special thanks to our statistician, Jeff Nelson, and our entire crew for Kelly Stauffer, Quint Kesnick, and our entire ESPN Plus organization. I'm Wayne Larrabee. This has been a presentation of ESPN Plus, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. So long from Indiana.